Tony Dunn. Eric. Ain't nothing to it but to do it, brother. Let's roll. In a world where Carolina Panthers fans have an insatiable thirst for Panthers news and opinions, only one podcast roars ferociously. It's the C3 Panthers podcast. Holy. Holy, holy moly. What a new year, a new day, a new vision. And the Car- the C3 Panthers podcast intro worked after yes, two did. two weeks of not working mysteriously. No changes. Holy cow. It is, it's like a ray of sunshine coming in through the clouds. Frank Light or Frank 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 Reich. Is it for you to say? Uh, yeah, he delivers his vision for the future of the Carolina Panthers. That's tonight's C3 Panthers podcast, the longest running Panthers podcast on the internet. Every Tuesday night at 9 p.m., we chop up the latest Panthers news and opinions from the fan perspective. Jump in the car, folks. The car's turned into bus. The bus is turned into a caravan. caravan. We're riding to Bank of America and coming home, talking shit both there and on the way. I feel like we're celebrating at this moment potentially a solid direction i feel good about the captain of the ship finally someone who is authentic and not a fraud my name's tony dunn and i'm here with my wheel man cody lashney how are you doing my friend tony dunn i'm doing good this is my second time podcasting today Boy, you live, killed it killed it did a, did a live reaction to frank reich's press conference uh, I'm seeing a lot of the same people in the chat room that we did in here earlier. Man, we definitely appreciate y'all. And yeah, Frank Reich laid out his vision for the future of the Carolina Panthers. I'm excited. You're excited. It has us rethinking what we feel about David Tepper, about Scott Fitterer, just about this organization in general. Hope springs eternal, Tony Dunn. And you know what? We're going to share all this hope and good feeling and positivity and keep pounding attitude with the best damn panther fans in our world and all of youtube you already know them and love them we got our man joey the blind panther esquivel craig cartner david screws dimitri contos g bit house what's up? hemlock levi warren lynn leonhart matt knows nothing michael davis pad one panther panther Michael, Patty Grimes, Salesman, Shane Falco, Sean Butler, Smell Like Blue, William Taylor, and Tim Estes. Tony Dunn, ain't nothing to it but to do it, bro. We got a brand new head coach. Let's roll. CK, today I learned um, what a real NFL football guy was in comparison to a guy who was a football guy but not an NFL football guy yeah. before Frank Reich from top to toe from tippy top to bottom toe has been steeped in the NFL and you can feel it. There is no fluff. There is no bullshit. It is straight on point. And I tell you, man, I'm ready to be part of the cult that we're going to create this year. The C3 cult. We're making a difference this year and it's starting hot. It's starting optimistic. And boy, I don't know. This guy is a player's dude. He's a real deal. Real deal. Sure. I mean, I I think that uh, there's a lot to be optimistic about. I think, um, you know, he said a lot of the things that we want to, we want to, um, you know, we've wanted our team to be for a while. And, and, you know, to be fair, I mean, Matt Rule had a decent opening press conference as well. And so I'm not ready to, um, jump on board uh, simply because of uh, uh, you know one press conference. However, um, I will say that I'm I'm you know just based on what I've heard, there were a couple of things. There's some tea leaves you can read between, or however you want to look at uh, the 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 press conference. But the one thing that stuck out to me was he said you want to do the 14 play drives, but you can't rely on that. That can't be what your identity is because. It isn't going to work. We saw that last year or this past season. 
right? We wanted to be this like 14 play, seven minute drive, and it would happen every now and again. Top five defense every year and year out. The 15 to 12 Panthers to the Seahawks games that we watch for years. Yes, ideal, but not what happens on a weekly basis. Right. And so, you know, I love that he did come in with a, a mindset of, you know, we know what we've done in the past and we know we can't sustain, a, a you know, a, any really true level of success if we're going to be uh, approaching our offense that way. We've got to be able to have a top five defense, but also have an offense that keeps them off of the field. You can't have what happened against San Francisco and the Eagles where, you know, they have a really good defense, but there's only so long that they yeah. were going to hold up. They you have to be able to win up. games when the circumstances turn out to be less than ideal. Yes. If it was ideal, we wouldn't play the games, right? If it was just what the paper said it was, we would just simulate the suckers. But you, every, what did Mike Tyson say? Everybody's got a plan till you get punched in the mouth. Punched in the face. That's it. You know, That's and it. so that is the thing is you want to be a team that has a great defense. You want to be, and he said those things. Let's just not, but you need to be able to be a team that can win under any circumstances yeah. when your defense, look, think about what happened with San Francisco. What did they say on the broadcast over and over as you're down to Christian McCaffrey being the quarterback, the defense is going to have to win that game. If you have a chance, like you have to be able to win games sometimes where your defense wins the game, your yeah. offense wins the game. It cannot be an ideal circumstance where you're always winning and the defense is always stuffing. Look, I just felt like this. Frank Wright, it was, he is, I think it's going to resonate very, very well with NFL players because I, they, there's no bullshit. There was no fluff. There was no extra. It was just this. Is This is how you actually do it. What do you got to right. do? You have to be great at everything. You have to be nimble. You have to be able to adjust. Frank Wright, um, I'm going to go ahead and out and say this right now, and I'm not big on taking the crazy takes, you know, because uh, you guys were talking about on the live show today, Cody, about kind of being cautious. Not you. Uh, one, our, our friend John said is like, you don't want to get as a content creator. You don't want to get burned either. You know what I'm saying? Right. And that might make you conservative in some cases. I'm going to say this is Frank Wright. Best hire of this off season for any NFL team. Like, yeah, the gym. I'm down. I'm down. I'm ready to say, I think Sean Payton, you, you give too much. We'll talk about that. There's all of these yeah. other, I think Frank, right. Is a fairway shot down the middle, but not just a layup, a good shot, right? A good shot down the fairway. I'm very happy. We've got a lot of good things, but I don't think they are just window dressing. I think there's a lot of good framework to build off of this. I've got a lot of things to say about Frank Reich's press conference, and we hope you do too. The number is 252-228-5098. That's 252-228-5098. We we want to get your thoughts on your first impressions of Frank Reich, some of the discussions that are going around the league, Sean Payton going to the Denver Broncos, D'Amico Ryans to the Houston Texans, How does this relate to the Carolina Panthers hire? And what did you think about some of the questions when it comes to Scott Fitterer and David Tepper and the relationship of how Frank Wright will fit in? Do you like it? Do you love it? Do you believe it? Are you cautiously optimistic? My name's Tony Dunn. It's the C3 Panthers podcast. Cody, Lasty, let's jump in. Let's do it, man. And not to it, but to do it. And first of all, we have to give thanks to the patron saints of the C3 Panthers podcast. You know him and love him. It's Michael Davis. He says, for the first time in four years, I'm not pissed about paying for my tickets. NFC South is wide open next year. I can't wait. Thanks, you, Michael, for that $35 love bomb. We certainly appreciate you, brother. Everybody's feeling pumped. Everybody's feeling excited. Man, Tony Dunn, ain't nothing to it but to do it. Let's roll. Frank Reich finally had his first introductory press conference as the head coach of the Carolina Panthers. 
And he says the vision is clear. Create a consistency of excellence. The top is championships. The bottom, bottom is playoff. Is where playoff team. This man is talking about winning football games. And of course, why wouldn't he talk about that? Anyone would talk about that. You should. But, you should. This yeah, is interview with, fodder. Right. But with a person like Frank Reich, with the pedigree that he has, with the history that he has, I'm sorry, I'm inclined to believe him. This reads like much more than just speak, in my humble opinion. And I really do think that he has a vision for how he wants to build the Carolina Panthers. And a lot of things were mentioned in today's pilots. Like I said, we I reacted to it live today. He talked about the quarterback position and wanting a quarterback that can run. And, and, yeah, he's and, very yeah. open. He's a yeah, very he open-minded guy. He's very flexible. And you know what, man? The fact that he is so open makes me even more optimistic in the future that we're not going to be fed a line of BS like you know, like we had for us all the time when Matt Rule was the head coach. Nothing felt genuine. Nothing felt like it came from a place of honesty. It all felt like coach talk. And yeah, I really, yeah. And I, I mean, yeah. it was window dressing, window yeah. dressing. And I don't get that feel from Frank Reich because he's very forthright in the kind of team that he wants to build. He said that there are five traits of being great. He said toughness is number one. Number two, this one's number, awesome. I love this. Number two is accelerated vision, slowing the game down for yourself. You hear this a lot. Quarterbacks, when they're rookies, going into their second year. Game too fast. Yeah. They, about you know what I really like about this, Cody, is what I love about this point right here is so many times we refer, we describe things in the negative. And when I say the negative is like what we don't want it to be. So when you say you want the game to slow down, it's a negative statement. What he's actually saying is you want your processing to speed up, which I right. think is a positive statement is like, that's a way to actually get right. the game to slow down. The other way is like, Oh, the game, these guys are playing fast. The game has slowed down for them. No, they have sped up. I like this positive. This is how you achieve it. This is how you achieve it. I know it's a small thing, but I made no, a difference it's, for the way. It, it's a very big thing. And considering that we're wanting Frank Reich for his ability to work with quarterbacks, this is maybe the most important one on this entire list. But do you know, and he you didn't mention, he didn't, I mean, yes, you're right about that, which you're right. But he also used it to how defensive players approach the game how people right. were lined up in their stance. It was, yes, I think on its face, what we want to say is like, hey, the uh, all the great quarterbacks. Look, Joe Burrow right now, they say he's processing the game faster than anybody, right? Patrick Mahomes, some people say this, is Patrick Mahomes say, sees it so fast he doesn't read defenses. He just like knows, like he just like is like a it's data. Intuition. Like it just comes in like a supercomputer right. and he just outputs what to do. For but, all my Dragon Ball nerds, he has that ultra instinct, man. Yeah, just, I mean, it's, it's just loads. like they got to make an extra category for him, right? But yeah, he absolutely. didn't, and I know we go to the quarterback with that, but I think his example in his press conference was like something like how an offensive lineman or a D lineman was lined up and how you line up against them, like how that stance dictates right. yeah. potentially what a tell is. So I like how he's not just exclusively thinking quarterback. Yeah, but I, and again, though, I do like how this does. You can contribute it to the quarterback position. And to me also says having such a clearly defined, deeply entrenched game plan that is so well rehearsed in practice as well that you know exactly what you're supposed to be doing. You know exactly where your guys Any are supposed scenario. to be. Yeah, Any scenario. Any scenario, you are ready. The Luke, this is like Luke Keekliness. Yes, like if you 100%. could term it as, like that is a, if we were going to name the characteristic on the game, it would be your Keekliness rating. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, number three, he says footwork, which again, you can kind of copy and paste these all to the quarterback, but for everyone, you know, 
uh, how you line up, the stance that you line up in. Right. He really made it a point to talk about the attention details and how the small things are going to be what's good on you good. over the edge consistently. He's good yeah. on good. He Absolutely. said this, and this is right. This is what I love about pro football versus college. I know you guys like Kyle, uh, Cody. You love college. Mm-hmm. Um, the one thing I, I'm always suspicious about college football, though, is like when you see great players on a college football field, they look better because the some of the very good players around them, though, are ultimately average. And oh, yeah. they just look so fast. So whatever, and comparison to those guys, they are fast. They are running fast, but a four four in the NFL versus a four four in college football are different because the linemen run four fives or four sixes or whatever it is. Right. And when he used the term "good on good," everybody's fucking good. It's the one percent of one percent. How do you separate yourself? You know. And even something to the effect of, he said this, technique is like, hey, we have to, on those plays, you're both good. The person that did it more fundamentally sound wins that individual battle. Accelerated vision wins that battle. And we know toughness in the NFL. Everybody's fighting to the end. And these four and fives are the real things. These are the Mahomeses. This is the Mahomes factor. Yeah. It's just the thing that gets it done. Right. Yeah. Playmaking, playmaking, and having that X factor, meaning you have something inside of you that is innate. Not everyone we saw else. It with Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. Not everyone week. else just has it. You can either make the play or you can't. And having is that can, or you do make the play changers. or you don't. It's not yeah. whether you can or can't, it's whether you do or don't. Right. And you know, I mean, everybody do. can make those plays. It's just, is it two minutes and you score a touchdown or is it two minutes and you go three and out? You Absolutely. know? Absolutely. And um, yeah, I was very impressed with Frank Reich. Hey, let me welcome this man to the stream. The stat daddy, the bat daddy. What's up, brother? How you doing? What's going on, man? I'm doing pretty well. Sorry, I'm a little late to y'all. Uh, Honey, list gets big on the days off, so I wanted to go ahead and it knock is. Up, finish that stuff up. It's okay. We're going to cover you with the comments as your punishment. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, we're here talking about uh, the Frank Reich press conference, and before we get into the details of it, Cody, one thing yeah. I want to bring up is, or ask, did you guys notice any differences between this press conference and the way it was uh, presented and Matt Rule's press conference. One of the things that comes to mind is that David Tepper, not the primary introductory in, uh, speaker when it comes to this. Uh, Anish, Anush, what's it? Is, is, is it Anish? Yeah, Anish. What a great voice. Man, he's got pipes oh, like awesome. you, Stiko. His pipes yeah. are golden. Uh, but. Very, do you did you guys, or was it only me who was juxtaposing the presentation of this moment? And not just like how the Panthers presented it, but how everyone carried themselves. Did you guys notice any difference? Is it stood out to me the uh when it comes to the Matt Rule thing or um, press conference? I don't know if I would say I noticed any differences. It's been a while since I watched. Matt Rule's introductory. I remember it like yesterday. So much so that I'm trying to wipe it from my memory brand <laughs> completely. Like, I don't want to hear Matt Rule. I don't want to see Matt Rule. I don't want to fucking think about Matt Rule. I, I, you know, so to me, I don't know. Uh, did you we know have to? Did, How did can you did? not think about you? You have to juxtapose him. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's only one comparison right now, and that's the guy who was there before. Right. I hear you. I mean, I, I don't know. I okay. mean, what, what, what I, did it you stood notice? out to me. What did, any, what, right. what did you notice? What was the difference between Matt and Frank Reich's introductory? All right. So, at number one. Okay. Yeah, at the end of the day. Well done. At the end of the day. Number one is this, is David Tepper took a secondary role, or maybe even a third or a fourth role in this. Uh, just a third. What he did is he had someone else do 
the introductor introduction and maybe they had somebody but i don't remember i just remember david tepper being more of a voice more of a player in that moment right is really excited about this like i made the the great hire this and that the other thing that i would say is that the players were part of this that the players were front and center and i know that they laid and leaned heavy into frank reich's history with the carolina panthers which they should and it really because it is meaningful for him i mean the fact that his family truly lives here it shows that they're not just overblowing the connection between the carolinas Mm -hmm. and him it's like it's not like oh he played for us for a game here we found this connection I mean, there really is some sort of meaning to it. I feel like this is that Tepper knows he got burned. Tepper knows he got fooled. Tepper knows that he flirted with the girl that batted, that had the short skirt on and batted her eyes at the bar, but was really no personality, no substance, dead leg. And you know what? I think. He stepped back from this moment on purpose and potentially to avoid questions and criticisms about Steve Wilkes, maybe is could be part of that. But I just felt like there was this. This felt like a grown up press conference while the last one felt like. Maybe it's just uh, hindsight, but a fraud. Yeah, it, it's kind of like they're kind of pointing out in the chat. And so yeah, I was kind of thinking it with David Tepper. You think about him with the first hire, it's like a new rich person. He's got a bunch of money. He's going to flaunt it. And, you know, you flaunt that money and then all of a sudden you get robbed. Now he's a little more careful, keeps it a little closer to the chest. And maybe he's not going to try to take as much credit for it because he knows that it could come back as a failure. He was so confident it was going to come back and be a win last time. Right. Yeah. It, it's hard to look at a lot of differences between these because while I like Frank Reich better than Matt Rule, I still don't know what Frank what the future is going to be with him. Um, and oh, it's going to be a lot of coach speak. It's going to be gorgeous. Like, it's going to be coach speak regardless. It's not, Greg. It's not. Yeah, I, dis- I, I, I disagree. I, I I feel I feel like, and I said this earlier. Like you have to I say the right thing. Greg is right. Ju- though. You have to say the right things. Like yeah, you can't you do, come out there and be but, like, but, "Fuck but y'all!" I don't want to do a press conference. It has to be I believe in Reich but, more right, than I do. But there's Rule a saying. there's a difference been between when Frank Reich says something Agreed. versus when Matt Rule says something. Agreed. Frank sure. Reich has the pedigree and ability to say those things. And you know that it makes sense because he's done this before. He does have a high level of success in the NFL, which is something that Matt Rule never had. And then Matt Rule brought all of his coachings with him from college to the NFL. So there there was a a complete and utter lack of NFL talent on the Carolina Panthers coaching staff that made it all the more disingenuous, I feel like. Let me tell you this is I've made a list, guys. I watched part of uh, the show, uh, your live stream today, which was fantastic. By the way, thank you for all the people that tuned in and participated in that. You had people jumping in. We had John Ellis come in there. Man, like great. Um, A great show. So thank you, Cody, for being there. I was at work and, you know, I did uh, tune in while I was watching. But I tried to make as I was watching the press conference which I watched after your live stream. So I was trying to, I tried to go and watch the press conference and put away what I saw people talking about and just say, I'm going to watch this press conference and draw my own, you know, hopefully with as least possible influence from outside noise to look at or what to be happy about or what to be sad about. And the first thing that stuck out to me, and this is, I guess, going back to a difference between the Matt Rule era and maybe his initial press conference and the Frank Reich one, is that I felt like from the get-go, Frank Reich was comfortable enough with himself, was confident enough with his abilities to where his ego did not need to be part of it or to get in the way. And the way I thought about it was this, is he talked about players, the team, and we. He didn't talk about me. Me. 
you know, is it felt like this is, but I think there's a certain confidence you have to have when you're at this stage or at this moment to where I always tell my kids is that if you try to be cool, you ain't cool. You either cool or you ain't. If you're trying to be cool, you ain't cool. And I felt like Frank Reich didn't have to try to be cool. Like he didn't have to make this moment about him. He knew that he was capable enough to execute, or I think confident enough. And here is the moment that I really, at first, not the first moment, the first of many moments that kind of set in for this. David Tepper comes up there and he says, oh, Anoush, you stole half of my speech. We're happy to be here. Let me get out of here before I say something wrong like I have every other time. <laughs> I've been on the mic for the last year. He's and learning. A half, right? He's learning. Right? He's like, finally he's like, learning. I gotta get out. Like he didn't even want to go up there. You could see he was like, I didn't. Even, I didn't think. No, he Tony. To, go to be fair, to be fair, he did answer questions to the media a little yeah. bit wrong. Yeah, he oh, did. I didn't see that. Yeah, he did. His well, own good for him. Off. Good for him. I just felt like this is, and I'm not trying. I'm actually trying to compliment him for that. Is get out yeah. of your own way. Sometimes get out of your yeah. own way. But here's the thing: is Frank Reich went up there and shook David Tepper's hand. Remember, you, you saw it. David Tepper goes, you want to go this way or you go that way? Frank Reich says, I'll come to you. I'm going to shake your hand. But then he didn't walk up the steps. He walked all the way back to the players and shook every one of their, their hands. And he made that moment about them, not him. Yeah. And I felt like this is that I really felt this. I think it's a confidence thing, guys. I don't think I'm trying to say like, oh, he's like, oh, I'm going to make this all about y'all. I'm not trying to say he's like trying to kiss up. I think when you're comfortable enough in your own skin that you don't have to make it about you. Yeah. That's my first yeah, takeaway. And, and, and you know what? Uh, so uh, just to back off of what you just said. And yes, this is one of the differences between Matt Rule's press conference and Frank Reich's press conference is there were players there and they were front and center. Those players included Jeremy Chen, Marquise Hands, Akima Kwanu, Taylor Moten, Ted Jackson, and Brady Christensen still in the boot on a Neely scooter in the front row. And what's even better this about that, Tony? This up. Man, these, Dude, the but, Christiansons even, are the best at their own PR, bro. I love I love Christiansons. Wasn't Chuba Hubbard there? I swore I saw Chuba Hubbard was there. Maybe he was. I don't know. Th this list might be a little incomplete. but yeah, to, I think I heard someone things, mention that, too. Yeah, but one of the things that, that really stood out to me, not only... Okay, so right when they introduced Frank Reich, the first thing that he does... Instead of going up right on stage to start yeah, talking, go, he, he, he goes literally, and shakes their hands. He he goes and finds the players and shakes each and it every was way one out of, of his way, hands. too, guys. It was out of his way because if you look at the way that Tepper was coming off, the way he went up, Tepper said this way or that, and Reich said, I'll come to you, shook his hand, and then could have walked up two steps to his right and just beelines it back to the players and then look not not only did he start his press conference that way but the first people that he talks to as soon as the press conference is over is all his players his ego is right? not going to be a problem bro you okay. see him right here talking to to Akim Aquanu, talking to jeremy chin and a lot of these things this is leadership now, okay, and maybe, you know, maybe if you're bad daddy, maybe you say, oh, well, he knows the cameras are there. He's hamming it up. No, no, you have to, this, this to be, be fair genuine. to I don't, I don't want to be skeptical. This this looks like no, you have to do the yeah. right things. We can't right. be mad at people for doing the right things, right? right. It's me, like you have to shake the right people's hands. You got to kiss the babies if you're a politician. Mm -hmm. Right. This signals to me that Frank Reich knows where his bread is buttered. He knows. He that said he's it. Gonna, he said this is a player's league, bro. He's going to live and die as the head coach of the Carolina Panthers on what the Panthers players feel and think about him. How many times last year did we talk about the difference between what Matt Rule 
gets out of the Carolina Panthers players versus what Steve Will was able to get out of the Panthers players. If you're able to motivate your team to play for you, that's a man. That's a leader of our football team. And you don't motivate people through fakeness. You don't motivate people with PowerPoints. Now, I'm not saying that you don't, you shouldn't have a, like a PowerPoint, like, uh, I mean, but what I'm saying is this is, and I tell my students this all the time, is that while you, while you may not know a ton about early American history, which we are talking about in my classes, or you may not have a lot of experience in academics, like higher academia, you do know how to smell bullshit. Yeah. 18 year like is and the idea is this is that while kids may not be nuanced enough to tell you exactly what is wrong they know when it's fake they do and real motivation in my classroom comes through authentic excitement authentic commitment right is that if and that that really it it like Steve Wilkes, and I hate to bring up Steve Wilkes in, in this moment because sadly he's not the man who got the job, is he said, I'm not here to be your buddy. I'm here to be your friend, right? And so there is an authenticity that came off right away with Frank Reich's press conference that just felt like I do think that the players will appreciate it. They will respect it. Um, And go into the next part about it, I guess, continuing with that mantra of the players or his ability to work. This is where I got not a me thing. I'm telling you, I do not think that his ego is going to be a problem. And he just came from an organization where their owner is more fucking bizarre than ours. Right. Like, I mean, is that if you guys want to go and talk about how David Tepper is the problem in this or that, imagine what Colts fans are saying about Ursay, right? And the Ballard, the Chris Ballard, who is a power guy, he was able to work with them. And this is where I was very excited, guys. Not only was he making this about the players, he said right away, I'm going to fit perfect with Scott Fitter. I'm ready to go to work with him. And I want to bring back this to you guys. When we hired Scott Fitterer, David Tepper, they let go of Marty Herney. Matt Rule was part of that process. There was division among Tepper and Matt Rule about who that guy should have been. And what we have, what we inherited with Scott Fitterer, I truly believe was not Matt Rule's pick. He said this is that, look, David Tepper continues to say, it's like we got a you know separation of powers. But if you go back and look at Matt Rule's press conference right. after Scott Fitter was hired, it was mild, measured, and distant. And I felt like today's press conference with Frank Reich freed Scott Fitter. It breathed life into yeah. him. It breathed, breathed confidence into him, C.K., is I think he's, what I wrote about him is that he works well with others. I, you know, what I felt with this is it, it did feel different. Now, here's the thing. Can I point out where it felt different? No. Right. Um, And and that's the part that I think people are going to have a hard time. There's, there's, well, yeah, but I also think there's also a feel to it, right? There's a gut feeling. And, uh, you know, when you, when you see him, him speaking, there were a couple of times that I felt a little bit cringe about some of the things he was saying, like, but uh, you know when he was asked about the 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 turf, I, yeah, I don't know that he oh, was ever. We have wanted. to talk about this. Did we y'all will. hear we that? Did y'all? No. Hear I did. This? I did. We have to talk about that. Go ahead, CK. Yeah, I mean, just like even that part. Like, I think he knew what was being asked, and I think he almost was intentionally kind of approaching it in the. Like, I didn't understand you, so I'm going to answer in a different way. Um, I also felt the tangent about, um, you know, w- the coaches have to be in charge. And I, even though that may be true. That was felt, the same answer. It felt that was awkward. The same I know, I know. But it was, it drew out into this really awkward, in my opinion. Because I don't think he really got the question. 
He well, even if he didn't didn't get the question, I mean the 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 way he took that was just a bit odd. It was a bit awkward. Um, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna you know condemn him. Was he wrong of, though? He's not wrong, but I don't think that the players are right now. The I think the main thing you've got to do is. Yeah, I, I think that there's some things you can just leave in house for the time being. And, and I think that's one of those things that he could have just given a coach answer. He could have answered just, it better. Well, okay, let, me better. let me ask you this. I tell you how no, he answers I, it. No, better. no, no. I, I really want, I want to ask this question, right? Was it, I mean, listen, shout out to Jenkins. We love Chris Jenkins. Charlotte vibe is the man. We've dubbed him the man of the people. And he is, he asked the questions that people want to know. But what what exactly was he supposed to say right there? Because he's put in a position where you either side with the players or you side with the owner. Or you just and say less. And, but, but listen, and he's certainly not about to there and say, oh, yeah, we're going to do what's right by the players and we're going to make sure that they get the right kind of turf. And you can't go the other way and say, well, no, I mean, the turf is good the way it is. That's or you could just be honest. You could just be honest. <laughs> And I tell you this it's, is what, what this is the uh, no, well he tried to get there. I don't know if he fully understood the question. I think he got kind of flustered by not either he faked it, either if he I, faked like is like I surface. I feel like he faked it. He's uh, like uh, it's, it's, surface, no, and he thought yeah. he's like, are you talking about a Microsoft Surface? Are you talking about the Surface? <laughs> there is a question if he really is how in tune he is with that actual conversation about the turf that we are right is like i mean that's something that the panthers right. have been living and the panther fans have he is getting to know this or like i don't know how much he knows but he didn't he hasn't even talked to any players yet right he's so gonna it's have not time. like players have been like this but here is this is i think his answer was at its core the right it was correct and that is look is we appreciate every man on the ship but the owner of the ship is the guy who decides what kind of boat we actually sail. Right. At the end of the day is this, is that like this at the, that's a question that sadly is not determined by the players. That's not determined by the coaches. Right. And what I think the only real better answer would have been is that when they asked him about why they believe David Tepper hired him, that that's a better question for David Tepper at the end of the day is if I'm not in control of the 53 roster and that's not what I'm here about. Do you really think I'm mm -hmm. fucking controlling what color cups you drinking about in the, in the stands or the, you know, is that like, wow, I understand that that's an issue that's important to players that may be relevant to this organization. It's a little bit out my introductory press conference waters. That's what I would have just said is like, Hey, I mean like whatever I believe on the matter not don't fucking matter. My whole point was that it was a tough question either way because you're damned if, damned if you don't. And by or the you way, just take the middle. No, 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 you're wrong. If you do that, then it seems like a pure deflection. Like, now, nah, because it's touching not that, your decision, no. but they're still going to talk That's bad like about asking him for my, doing me it. what my wife is going to wear gonna, next weekend. Gonna, it's not my decision. No, they're going to say that he was too cowardice. He gave an answer that, that didn't say Not much that. of anything. You're damned if you do. You're damned if you don't. Scenario. I, th I think you're right, Cody, but not at this point. I think it's too early to make that judgment at this point. You know what I mean? Like, like you're right. What is he going to say in this situation? I kind of agree with Cody. Like, like, he has no control over that. There's nothing he can do. The, the best answer would have been, like he said, this is my, th maybe give my thoughts on it or I have this about it, but I'm just walking in. Remember when no they asked or what's going on with it? Look I mean, at what, what Lynn do? says. Take the middle and put everyone off. No, and I no. agree. I feel like that's what I feel like that's what it is. Do you guys remember this? Is my favorite president, and I'm not gonna. My favorite president of my lifetime has been President Obama, and I got to see him speak when I was in graduate school in his first campaign. He said this. He was asked one time. When did he believe the point of life was? And he was like, bro, at the end of the day, like that's above my pay grade, no matter what. Like, is that and and it wasn't a cop out. It was like, if you really are asking me to be the inform like the guy who informs this, 
we're not asking the most qualified person at this moment. Like you can ask me different questions and I would have different opinions for them. And this was that what I would end at the end of the day is say is like, what are, let me just give you a counter example. I'm so tired of poor Ron Rivera. You know where Ron Rivera gets hired as a head coach? Wherever there is a fucking disaster of a situation that the owner doesn't want to talk to anybody. That's when they bring in old Ron Rivera. I don't know if you remember all the shit that we went through with Greg Hardy. Do you remember the Greg Hardy saga? How could we of not? like, yeah, I mean, missed a whole year in this limbo situation. Ron Rivera every week comes out there and he's like taking bullets for the league, taking bullets for the Carolina Panthers, taking bullets for Jerry Richardson. These are the guys that really are the people making those decisions. Two years later, when the Carolina Panthers had to sell the Panthers in shame, well, in the Richardson leg shaving shame, Ron Rivera has to come out there and take all the whipping. And the, then the guy goes to the Redskins who become the commanders and the, the this and that. He's been through all of that shit. And I just look back at Frank Reich and say, the fucking field turf is not his decision. It would be like, do you not like the social media right now? I don't think it's a bad question, Cody, but I would at the end of the day say, that's like asking me what my wife should wear next Sunday. At the end of the day, what I fucking think about it don't matter. She's the one that's going to choose the dress. I hear you, but just because that's the common sense answer doesn't mean that it isn't going to draw criticism from unreasonable okay. people. I'm not saying that you're wrong. I'm so saying take a that, face that no matter, no matter Roll what that grass he would say, that's what I played on. No matter what he would say, it was going to be the wrong opinion in the eyes of someone. That's the only thing that I'm really trying to say here about it. Lynn um, said this. He, Lynn said this, hmm? Cody. She said uh, he was asked his opinion. Everyone has an opinion. That's what I wanted to bring up. I'm yeah. a big Pulp Fiction fan. I hope yeah. If you guys, if if you're listening to this podcast, and you haven't seen Pulp Pulp Fiction. You got to go watch it. It's Tarantino's best film. Yeah, it is great. arguably what I, my I can tell. It's my favorite screenplay. Like if we sat and read it, it would be. And then the fact that the actors made it important like i think the dialogue in that movie is incredible and here is one scene after they kill all those people in their initial beginning over the burger you get the burger scene oh man that's a juicy burger he drinks it like and they're riding in the car and marvin is in the back seat and they ask him they're sitting there talking about and i think they're talking about i don't know if they go back to the feet but they go back and samuel and uh, John Travolta are having a conversation in the car, and they're dis they're disagreeing. And John Travolta looks in the back, and he says, "Marvin, what's your opinion?" And this poor kid has watched his friends get murdered. He's riding with these two assassins, and he goes, "Man, I don't even got an opinion." And then John Travolta says, "This." He says, "You gotta have an opinion." He pulls the lint on him. And then he bumps his hand and blows Marvin's head off by accident. You don't have to have an opinion. Why can't we be Marvin? If you say that, that's just not how the world uh, works. Okay. It's not how I'll the world say, works. Don't yeah, be yes, Marvin. Yes and, yeah, don't yes be and, Marvin. Uh, like when in this situation, I'm, I'm looking at what Lynn's saying. She's right about having that because you do have to have an opinion. And it kind of goes back to your, your Barack Obama thing. Like, I think there's a difference between asking somebody their opinion and then asking them choose what the thing is like what if when you, somebody, when, oh, when, when, you ask, when you ask frank reich do you like turf right. or grass you're not saying make the decision now to choose what it's going to be you're asking him his what opinion. if i Same asked you Barack if Obama cody was going to heaven or hell greg huh yeah uh is cody going to heaven or hell greg uh i mean can I think you Cody's, not have an opinion about that question that had depends on a lot of different factors like do you have to choose yep <laughs> What if you don't ahead, believe in heaven right or hell? Now. Choose right now. What if you don't, what if you don't believe choose. in heaven or hell? Then how do you One, two, three, choose. That's what I'm saying, Greg. <laughs> right. 
but but you don't have to either here's like, like turf you, you, or not like turf. You could say, look, turf then your, and grass then your, then is then in the existence is, of the NFL, and we got to fucking deal with it. But then your opinion is, I'm indifferent to it. Like I have, I have that that is a situation where, where I have an opinion because I don't have any. Okay. You know, so all right, you're going you know, to heaven, Cody. But yeah, nonetheless, dude, let's go. Nonetheless, that that did you entire... hear him drop that one? <laughs> Uh, but he said, but, "Let's go in the press conference." Yeah. He pulled the old okay. dad reference. This yeah. is like me talking to my kids. It was awesome. <laughs> Let's go, yeah. I, I, you know, I where he was talking about playing in 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 the in the Carolinas and um, yeah, you know, yeah, it was it, awesome. It was a good uh, moment. That might have been the most, I mean, like a uh, candid moment. Yeah, yeah. I, I just I don't know. There were just like I said, it was it was an awkward care press conference for me. But at the end of the really? day. It was it was it was just awkward. Like it just didn't feel yeah. like it wasn't like one that's gonna. Sure. I wasn't sitting there ready to run through a wall for the guy, right? Yeah. Um, and, and and that's okay. It didn't have to be. Sirianni's uh, press conference when he was first hired was infamously one of the worst ones that he was yeah. constantly criticized about. The in, the point. introductory press conference means absolutely nothing with with how he is going to be successful in this league. Um, and a lot of the questions he's asked um, are going to be around. His philosophies about whether he, you know, what type of quarterback he wants to go after, whether oh, this seems is very the right flexible way or this is the on right all way. of that. Though. I want to come back to your statement about run through the wall, though, CK. Sure. Is is that really uh, when we say like at this level, when everybody is super pros, when people have been in the league longer than he has as a player, you know, what I'm saying have been right. he's a like he said a backup quarterback, but these guys are all super professionals right right they uh all prepare they're all good on good is having a guy that outward is that motivation from the outside does it truly come in that over intensity that rah-rah moment or can that leadership come in this is and he mentioned this is that he's had a couple of years where they didn't have good starts this season and they figured things out. I think after his first his first season, they started out like one and five, and then he finished a ten and six, or something like this, yeah. or whatever. Yeah, to he, the he effect went is. on like a, a big, big win streak. Yeah. And this is where you know, at one point, I wanted Ron Rivera to be the guy when he was struggling early in his career. I wanted him to be throwing his clipboard. I wanted to be grabbing people by the face. I wanted him showing the frustration that I felt because I thought that that frustration meant intensity commitment but it turns out sometimes in this league actually all the time in this league it's the guys who are able to weather those bumps and bruises and to make you realize that the dice are going to fall the other way if you keep doing the thing right and maybe those players don't need a guy who's rah rah yell and scream but a guy sure. who is steady the course and smart enough that they go you know what let me i don't know which I don't is why know which is why my my point is is like that's okay. Like I didn't, I, you know, I don't need the coach at the very beginning to to make me feel like oh we're winning a Super Bowl. I need him after the first season to make me feel like oh this is a better team than it was under Rule at any point in time, right? Like we don't. This isn't a scenario like Rule had. Like we went you know five and eleven the first year. It was his first year. We'll give him a break. No, he's got to come in here and perform immediately. Like, and this is well, he's ready to. He said exactly, that. and and so that's that is. He's what's not pitching going to us be. this like, oh, trust me. Throughout this, is he knows that this league is like the now. It's yeah. the not for long league. I think though, uh, CK. One of the things that really resonated me uh, with me about the difference between him and Rule mm -hmm. is, I think this is that we truly saw the difference between like a double A pitcher and a major league pitcher. Mm -hmm. We saw the difference between, and they might not be, look, Frank Reich might not be Barry Bonds or uh, Jared. 2023 wasn't a good year for the Carolina Panthers, but I'm trying to make 2024 a better one for myself. Get started on your resolutions with Factor so you're ready for the new year. Factors ready to eat meal delivery takes the stress out of meal planning and sets you up for success in the new year. Skip the grocery stores, prep work, and cooking fatigue. Instead, get chef crafted, dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. 
with over 35 meals to choose from per week, including keto options, calorie smart, vegan plus veggie, and more, plus over 55 weekly add-ons, you'll have a ton of nutritious and flavorful options to kickstart your resolutions. Skip that overpriced takeout trap. Factor is cheaper and way more delicious than takeout. Get chef-crafted, restaurant-quality meals delivered right to your door, and they're ready to heat and eat in just two minutes, which means more time for you. Head to factormeals.com slash C350 and use the promo code C350 to get 50% off. That's code C350 at factormeals.com slash C350 to get 50% off. Jeter, pick whatever Hall of Fame or baseball player you are that we want to make the comparison. But he's in the league. Like, you can just tell. He belongs. He knows this. I think that Matt Rule ultimately is not in the league. And, and I know well, he's I not agree. literally at this point. But, it's, it almost feels like this. It feels like Matt Rule is a very, very good high school baseball coach. Yeah, but like he's not good day, enough to be a coach. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, also, oh, I can get guys. I can organize them. We can run the drills and we'll be pretty you good. If you don't, if you want to go back in time, Tony, there was only one person who had anything negative to say about Matt Rule's press conference in this oh, panel right here. It was Greg. Yeah. And that was only one person, right? We all were like, oh, I love what he said here. I love what he, I, the press no, conference, we were, is I was so duped. pointless. I was duped. It's so pointless. That's what I'm saying. I didn't have to be duped today. Yes, and I like that, but I also, what is going to be the most convincing? The first act Matt Rule had as a coach was uh, to basically mislead us into thinking we were going to be playing under, like we we were going to be keeping Cam Newton, and eventually he made the decision to move on from Cam Newton, right? That was his first act as head coach with all the power that he could possibly have. We immediately saw a negative imp- like we all immediately felt negatively. We about learned Matt that Rule it was about Matt Rule. Mm-hmm. So, and you know so, what? We've learned this on his press, co- his little tour afterwards. CK, watch well, bus in with the boys. Yeah. Watch this. It's about it. Matt just Rule. he might not say it, but I think he believes it. So and maybe that's what be- college coaches truly have to be in a certain degree. Yeah. It's like they're the coolest motherfucker ever. It's like they got to walk in that room and be bringing all them recruits home and uh, like everybody's I- grandma. So all I'm saying right now with regard to this press conference, it has I watched it out of pure entertainment with no real un- like with no real intention of getting anything of substance out of it. Right. A lot of those things are going to be said exactly the same way by every single coach that's being hired by a new. This is just a bit of a different situation because of the circumstances where he was previously here. What I think is going to be the most telling isn't just how we start the season, but what are his first decisions as a head coach? Right. That is going to be the most important part of this. Um, if he's bringing he can't in, win just five games next year. No, anything but, less than five games is a. But Tony, say, if, down. if if he goes and he uh, he trades for Derek Carr and we go into Ooh, the draft I'm in on this, people and, hate me for this. No, 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 no. If we go that route again, where we are retreading quarterbacks, then Frank Reich is out, in my opinion, at that point in time. It's not we, going that route again. It's actually doing that route the way it was really supposed to be. Derek Not Carr is, it up. has had one good season. Like you can look at his numbers and say that he's been a decent core. He's had one season where he was considered but a potential trying, MVP uh, candidate. I got an argument so, for this. I have. So, a, yeah, you are. Cool but I, I, I know. I, I agree with CK one hundred percent. I mean, no. I mean, and by the way, he talked about quarterbacks a little bit in the pressure as well, and he's talking about what he looks for back. And yeah, while he did say ultimately you went on third down, you went in the red zone. You win in under two minutes. He did say that whenever you have a quarterback, basically that can run. I mean, he, oh, he this is what I love he, about him, dude. He said, I love he, him. Said, he said something to the effect of, "He said you, you have know, to be mobile. You're, That's the goal, no." Bro. But he said you're. He said you're a good team if you can run to the strong side. He said you're a Super you're Bowl a championship. Team he likes to say a championship. To, if, you, if you can run to the weak side, and, and to me, this. 
Backside, it, it, yeah. It, 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 Front side, it, backside, I think he said. No, weak side. It, it speaks no, to I remember the he used, of, uh, I think he used the attitude of, of this, is you got to win with your stars, yes, but you also have to be able to win in situations where you're not winning in those ideal. I think he said front side, backside. And what I think he meant was, I think is he that said the back side. Side. strong side. Okay. Well, look, we're chat. Yeah, check is. us. Fact check us. Yeah, look. Yeah. Who's right? Tony. I think Tony. he said think front right. side, back side. And like the front side stars, I think he said that. And what I think he I meant by that is like you're supposed point. to be able to win. Like to win games, you have to have players that fucking go and get it. Right? You gotta have yeah. uh Jamar Chases. You gotta have the waddles you got to have players that make plays you have to be like the eagles where you say oh we put these great players around him but what he that's the front side like that's the out exterior but at the end of the day there's gonna be moments when those plays don't fucking make it they don't work because the other team you're playing is very good so then you have to win in these kind of improvised improvised ways you know it's like you just have to find ways to win Look at what the Chiefs did this week, this week against the Bengals. Okay. Is like really the superior team lost. Yeah, and uh, the, the way, inferior the team is, made plays. Chat room is saying it's, you are correct, and yes, uh, apparently yes, I've, yes. I've been watching too much. Uh, remember the Titans. <laughs> Strong. And I think he meant Please that. Start. And I think what he meant by that terminology, though, Cody was less about where they on the, but I think it means this is that your star players are supposed to be stars. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Like if right. you're supposed and- to go out there and get a hundred yards receiving, you're supposed to throw right. 300, but you know what? There's going to be moments where we need you to play on a broken ankle and make that pass like Mahomes did or where, you know, you've got to, and mobility makes ability capable you know it's just something that you can't it's like oh you, we needed yeah. that first down i don't give a fuck how we get it we needed that first down and being able to run to the mark helps hey. yeah yeah and um yeah go ahead Greg. well i just want to add one before we get too far away from it i wanted to add one quick question to what ck had brought up and kind of sparked conversation here about frank reich's need to win so many games next year like he can't come in and he doesn't have the opportunity to rebuild like we honestly told matt rule he had or kind of gave matt rule do we think that Frank Reich is coming into a better situation than Matt Rule was? Yes. Because the way I kind of look at it, Matt Rule had the quarterback in Cam, but not the supporting cast around him. Frank Reich has a good supporting cast around him with a team, but no quarterback. Yeah. So I do think we think Frank Reich is coming into a better roster? Definitely. He's definitely further along. The team is with the shit. I just mean the team fur, Further along from where? when where? Matt Rule became the coach. To when Frank Wright became Where? the head coach. What position yeah. group? It can be one. Name the. No, it can only be the offensive line. No. Okay. I think only the offensive line. I really no, 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 think no. this Brady, is that. You're wrong. And you're still wrong. No, you're you can't wrong. name Brady it's, Christensen no, again. A, it's it's a Kim Kwanu. It's Brady Christensen. It's Bradley Bozeman. Did I not use the words offensive line? It's the only thing better. No, okay, our defense. It's the only thing we better on the team. You can't say the whole defense. Yes, we you can, Tony. Yes, you can. You no, you we can. Had, I think Tony. we had Rasul Douglas and Dante Jackson, and I would argue Rasul Douglas and Dante Jackson were just as good as C.J. Henderson. I Look, I don't think we're head and shoulders. I think oh, you guys are giving up. too much credit. I think uh, the C.J. offensive line. Yeah. Right. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, so the, the, the secondary. Yeah. I'm glad this sparked this. Awesome. So, no, the secondary. Pocket. Okay. Yeah. All right. Where Let's, else? Where else are we better? Luke retired. They uh, rule. I mean, now yeah, we the, still have no name a linebacker that we have that is any good. Uh, that is any good. We we have the same Shaq Thompson, but we have Frankie Louvu. Did we have a player like Frankie Louvu when Rule took right, over? Did, didn't have a Frankie Louvu, not right away. Did we have a Jeremy yeah, I mean, Chin when uh, when uh, when back. Rule well, took yeah, over? Well, we have fucking Julius Peppers, bro. We had uh, the we great... had Julius Peppers in his that in the latter half. Still Julius probably yeah, had nine. I bet you still had nine man. sacks, motherfucker. He, he did. You're right. He did. So we you know what I'm saying? Him. I bet you he got just as many sacks as Brian Burns did. Rule didn't have him though. You, you ruled didn't no, have him. that's what I'm saying. I'm trying to tell you this is I don't know 
how look, I think you guys are overinflating how good our roster no, is. No, right you're now. underinflating. I don't think it's as I don't think it has made, made a biggest step as you it's think. It's an entirely outside different of offensive, offensive line. line. Look, we had the same receivers, same fucking receivers. Got the same receiver. DJ no, we Moore. Have Paris we have Terrace Marshall it. Jr. who's coming on. Bro, he's got four passes. Oh, and I love Chuba Hubbard's come on. Dante, Deontay Chuba Foreman, Hubbard's if he decides on. to come oh, on. Y'all hey, are towards the, end of the, towards the end of the year, Tony, Chuba did turn Bro. it on. It's, it, if you look at how he played. That I, expect, I expect Frank Wright to win plus five games with this roster. And you know what? If he would have inherited the 2019 roster, I would ask you, I would believe he should be able to win five games with that roster. I do not okay. think, I think it's better, but I don't think it's head and shoulders. Look, we got Austin Corbett on an injury. We got Bradley Bozeman in a boot. We have, look, Dante Jackson has not played it's any season. It's better than not at all. It's no, better no, than I really, not truly, at no, all. I believe this is like, look, same linebackers, same receivers, no quarterback. No, man, no, nah, it's the fucking, it's not, it's be, it is maybe not better. the same. You're wrong. It you're is wrong. not you're wrong. giantly better. You, are <laughs> you guys up. are you over to to love this out. roster. You need you to go listen. to time no. out, dude. This is the one thing. And I look, Frank Reich said this in his press conference today. He caught himself. He did not go in on that shit that Matt Rule's been out there talking about. We had the number two defense. We had the number two defense. He said, ah, oh, they had a top defense. That's but we what he need to said. have a top five is what he said, right? We didn't yeah. have a top. Look, I think if you go back and really dig into the stats of last season, we have no top five defense, even close. No, there he's not saying we did. He's saying no, we need I know. to have a top five, yeah. I don't think even the defense in its best year was as fucking good as you guys said. Not that you look. What, mm. No, it's not. So but the defense last what, year was not, better than this year. Period. Tony, we Nobody still, is saying. We still, need, wow. we still need more players. No one's saying that we don't have holes to fill on the defense. I'm just but saying there's more than you gonna, are admitting. You're gonna compare what Greg asked. You sound the, like a Browns the, fan. The the team that Matt Rule inherited versus the team that Frank Reich is inheriting now. It's and by like the, way, the difference by the way, between you know a what else? fucking no, brass Scott ring Fitterer, and brass earrings. Fitterer, Scott Fitterer agrees with me because today when he was talking about Max in his press conference, oh, crazy. He, he was saying that we have built this team in a way where if we love a quarterback, we're in the position to go up and get them based on the strides that we've made on the offensive line, based on the weapons that we have, with DJ Moore and Terrace Marshall That's Jr., so silly. amount of pl uh, um, players that that we've Josh. acquired on hey, defense. Chuba. Say it. No, Say you're name. wrong. You're fucking wrong, dude. And everyone no. knows that you're wrong. No. This Shane is a Falco's with me. You sound team. like a no. You sound like a Browns fan. All right, all right. Let's. And let's here's do why this. I mean this, CK. This is what the one thing I mean is this: is that are there some pieces on our team? Sure. Can this team? Somebody said, "Oh, where's the hope, Tony?" I'm not saying there is no hope, but I wouldn't tell you this is I heard every Browns fan come in and say, our roster is so much better than people than it plays. Our roster is this. It's so good. And what I would say is this, is that there are, there's not the depth and the stars on this team that you think. I think you think that your sister is prettier than she truly is. I think your mama is pretty. Like everybody who's going to say their depth mama is pretty. No, having depth has nothing to do with the conversation that we're having. Literally Dude, nothing. It does. No, literally it nothing. Does. It does a little bit. Let me, you can't even you name the starters, let alone the backups. Can you want to talk about us I, not having depth? That's fine. But to say that the starters on this team are not markedly tell me a star better on this team. than what? No, but you, you can't dismiss the All entire right, fucking the offensive line. The entire fucking no, offensive line. Tell me line. the star. Oh, besides him. I've already right? given right. you that. I've already yeah. given you that. Tell me one other star. Let me let me do this. Let me let me take this back Jason a little Moore. bit to, to simplify this. That. To simplify this. Let's create a poll and ask the 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 chat. Do we think our ta our our roster right now is Dude. more talented no, than it significantly. was? Significantly, it needs to be. Now, I'm not saying that it isn't. First of all, I've granted that the offensive line is better. 
I understand. No, you're not that no you're what just, I'm saying is oh, you're acting like this. Is you come you're come pulling on. up in your Honda Accord. You're moving the and my Honda Civic, and I got a Honda yeah, Civic, and you're, you're like, oh, you fucking post, peasant. Dude. Yeah, you're kind of moving no, the goalpost a little. I'm not. Go yeah. back and listen to the tape. I'm saying no, this. I'll do is, what you want. I'll put significantly better. Like is significant. this Panthers team so who, who, def- who defines what's better. significant, though? Who defines what's significant is, is the only problem you have with that. You know? Um, the well, question was, I, are they let's better? Let's define it right now. Is this, is that we are trying to compare the 2019 to 2020 roster, right? The inheritance of Matt Rule versus sure. the inheritance of Frank Rank. So if this team is so much better, right? Mm-hmm. What do you think the difference in wins that equates to? So, all right. So in 2020, Frank Wright comes in with this inferior roster that you're talking about. How many wins do you expect he could make with that, get with that roster? And then how many do you expect him to get this year? And if it's less than one, one game, then that team ain't better. Or, or just weren't coached. I mean, there's a lot of factors. No, against. he's what the if, guy. Like, like, it's like if he took over this team – in 2019 or he took over it today is he in truly a significant like is does he is he five wins in 2020 but nine wins this year i don't think the roster tell me a a position group outside the offensive line and you know what fuck you with the offensive line get rid of that (laughs) austin corbett tore his acl bradley bozeman's in a boot Taylor Moten, you guys shit on all that doesn't season. Mean they all the no, sudden sucks to them with. No, no, that's no. fucking like, even crazy. Even your best the thing. Just the entire offensive line crazy. is fucking bananas. And in fact, it's one of no, the dumbest things. No, I'm not dismissing it. You have I think you think your wife is prettier show. than she right. is. Right. No, so here's, I'm telling you, you, you have beer Tony, goggles on. Is what I'm telling you. Let me let me ask. Let me do this. All right, and I'll tell you. And, and let me do this. And I'll ask you to do this. Let me finish what I'm going to say, and then you tell me what you think. Our offensive line is significantly better than it was in 2019, okay? Our wide receiver, you can talk about DJ Moore. He's not different. DJ Moore was the only wide receiver on this roster that was good at all, even remotely good. same. Okay? We're still in that spot. Now we have Terrace Marshall Jr. coming on and DJ Moore. Uh, so you, us, man, I don't want to hear that. And I love these. Hey, hey, give, give me a minute. Let me get through it all. All right. Uh, so now we have our better linebackers. We have a better cornerbacks. We have a better defensive line than we had when Matt Rule took over. Uh, we have better safeties. How? What Who do you are mean the how? Safeties? We have Fan and we have Rhodes. Xavier Woods, who didn't Xavier catch a Jim single and interception, who dropped Xavier every Woods. single time. Jeremy Chin. Oh, by the way, yeah, Andy, all, 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 all we have in 2019, about him needing to be a linebacker. What do we have with all of our Foreman, Dante Foreman and Chuba oh, Hubbard and Xavier Woods and J.C. Horn. Dude, you're, you're losing this one, man. And the poll says you're losing no, right now, is that, I'm not saying it's not better, but I don't think you, it's like the difference Are between... The- you're moving the goalpost so fucking yeah. much right no. now, dude. Right, you know what? Let's go call. I'm gonna look at no, I'm not moving oh, the goalpost. You you go I don't think right. you get what I'm saying. Oh, I think it, 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 maybe, you know what? what maybe actually saying. let me let me say this is if you're then I'm not being clear. I haven't been clear. And what I am arguing to you is this is that the difference between the 2019 roster and the 2023 Carolina Panthers is the difference between a Honda Civic and a Honda Accord. <laughs> and you know okay. what? You know what? I would say you're right. You're right. You know what? Your car's in a little nicer. No, I don't But, like, don't be driving better. around acting like no, you got a fucking Lexus or a, a Acura or something. Oh, dude. No, no. I mean, I think it's good. But you, I think this. I think you guys are the ones that are in with the over-optimistic goggles here that are sitting here telling us, like the Browns fans, those stupid fucking Browns fans that told us that they had the best roster in the league. And these we're motherfuckers can't that. even... Well, we're not saying no, we have the best what, roster in the league. A, but, no, but, but you are acting like it. They, you know what? They acted like it was better than it truly no, was. No, how about this? We're you're talking, misinterpreting no. us. No, no, no. You're 
misinterpreting okay. you. You're misinterpreting us. We're not right. saying that all of a sudden we're like the, the, the best roster in the NFC or no dumb shit like that. There's a bunch of holes that we still need to fill out on this team. Okay. But if you are comparing the teams that Matt versus the team that Frank Wright is inheriting right now and it's much can't bigger. see the tremendous, the tremendous, tremendous. depth of talent – that they, we have now added you. over the past three years, then you're being okay. fucking crazy, right. man. Here's the reason that that's the case. The Super Bowl. Can't it's wait. It's not. Here's the part. Here's why I think that that's true. Yeah. It's not that any position group is significantly better than another one outside yeah. of maybe the offensive line and the cornerbacks, right? But the problem is the 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 the, the, the real dagger to your argument is we have almost every one of our position groups are better than they were in 2019. Now. Does that mean they're significantly better? No. But what it does mean is that when you compound all of the increases in value as far as what we have as, uh, with our team, it is far. That is significant. When you have every position group uh, is better than it was be. in 2019, that is a significant. When you're talking about the NFL, when this is a yeah. game of inches, as they say, let me that tell is you this major. T- Oh, I need to do the. Do I, should I do the 2020 roster? Because the 2019 roster was not Matt Rules. Well, what was our record in 2019 then? Because I want to know what team, what the record was. We were five. Uh, we were five. Oh, we, uh, Owen F- Perry was uh, Perry Fuel was Owen four. Ron Rivera was five and seven. The so 2019 weird. roster was a little was a little bit old, but you know what? There's a lot of motherfuckers on this team that y'all bitches loved back in the day that are still 2019 team. Ooh. Let me tell you. Oh, yeah, 2019. Walk, I, I'm, I'm I feel like we need to go to 2020 yeah, because I feel like, look, should we talk about the team that Matt Rule coached? We're going to go into the, but here, this is the, t- here, let me tell you some of the names here, Cody, on the 2019 under Ron Rivera. And you like, I might, you might be ready to jerk off. Curtis Samuel. Oh, he you just blew your load. You left that Play year. No, nah, really he's play. listed yeah, right here. Up. 54 catches, 627 yards, six touchdowns. Cody right? last name with this 2019. Yeah, yeah this dude, is, he would have yeah. been so good if we had a franchise quarterback for him. James Second Bradbury was on that team. Field. Trey Bradbury. Boston was on that team. Shaq Thompson was on yeah. that team. Um, Don Terry Poe was on that team. Christian McCaffrey. Oh, Matt Paradis was on that team. Taylor Moten. Uh, they were just old. But this team on that, I think we really need to compare the 20. 20 team but you know what before we continue Agreed. in this stupid argument that i created no, um, it's greg's fault greg yeah. is uh, the it's fucking fault. i really like believe this, this. No, greg, i think it's better greg is the story of chaos well, and, and here's i feel my like thing. it's us coming back from the prom and you over bragging about how hot your girlfriend was <laughs> when my girl was pretty good looking yeah, meanwhile yeah. you're drunk off your ass you have beer guy i'm you not shit. i'm fucking you totally don't even sober. have a date to the prom and you're talking shit about everyone else's girlfriend uh-huh. dude. all right greg, this, this is gonna be two versus cat two calls greg greg oh greg, well, once, you, point, can, once you say your oh, point sorry then, then, um, then i was gonna say i'm point. actually tony after thinking about all this i'm a little more on your side here's the difference is i do think that we are better but i'm don't like you when you add the word when you add the word significant i think it takes it away i don't think we're significantly better we're he's better. inheriting he's inheriting Younger. a team that won two more games than the one that rule won the week year before and the team that he has now is a lot younger I mean, there are a bunch of different factors going a lot of different ways. I think they're better. I don't think they're significantly better. All right, here's yeah, my question. And it's here, not, I'm there. not trying to be negative, guys. Like, when you guys look, people in the chat are like, oh, ne- no. What I'm saying, this is realism, is that I think this is that this team can be a lot better than it is with Frank Wright. All right. But here's... I think that you guys got to be careful about going, oh, this team was good the whole time, and we just didn't have a good coach. We were. How do we know? Okay. How do we we're know? Okay. How do we know? Okay. How do we know okay. that that's not the case? We're just How okay because do we, we don't have any that stars. That's not the case. We don't we have don't, a single How do we star. Know? Let's break this down to investing. Let's break this yeah. down to investing. Okay. Not Let's a say you have on this thing. you you have six things you're investing in. As far as like you have you have these different. Uh, let's just say businesses. You have six businesses you're investing in. Okay. Um. Let's say in 2020, Matt Rule inherited a team that all six of those investments were he was losing money on, right? He basically took on a losing situation. I'm not giving Matt Rule much credit right here, but 
Um, now, where we're talking about with Frank Reich, now fast forward, those six businesses are now making him money. No, they're right? not. You they're, kid, dude, that's on. over. Oh, yeah, You're on, over inflating on, on. those businesses. No, they've been five. They haven't Let won more than it. six games. Let me finish what I'm saying. Okay. Now, it's not like you're making double your money, but you're making like a 10% return on investment, right? So you're making more money no, than you were making. You're not less. losing money. You're no, no, you're 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 still making more money, right? So Bro, we were under 500. You can't say we're making money. The entire <laughs> offensive line disproves your point. You are not giving enough credit to the offensive line. I don't give a damn about No, I know where CK was going year. this, but this, CK the, the business, business didn't turn a profit. Years. It did turn a profit. We have been yelling no, we didn't. for years. Did. The wall. Where? And it, it, it may not turn a profit. Where has it turned a profit? How many how many wins did we get in the last 12 games of the season? Six. Okay. How many losses in the last 12 games of the season? A hundred. I don't know. Six. We have not six. won six more than six. 50% of our games in a single season. Six and six. Every single has been losing. Right. I don't understand how yeah, the business rule. is prop. Not rule. It's funny how Steve Wilkes was able to get. Uh, as like, I understand your point. More than, more than Matt Rule ever did. You're not putting enough importance on the offensive line. We were on this podcast okay. for years. Wow. And we're build fucking, that man. Wall. We build were at 9 wall. and 17. 9 and, and 18, man. Just fucking ready did. to go Super Bowl. And now it doesn't matter. Now it just doesn't matter. He's not saying Dude, it, it matters matter, Cody. so much. No, I'm no, trying to say it yeah. And no, I don't want to make CK mad either. I feel like he's mad at me. I'm, I'm just, I, I want to be able to get my points across is my only thing. And so like when I, when I, when I bring that up is it's not to say that uh, we are winning right now, but what I am saying is right. When you look at where our team was the last 12 games of the season last year, it was infinitely better than anything we've seen in the past three years. Okay. So why I say sure. that is if you had the exact same like everything worked. If let's say Steve Wilkes had the reins on this team from week one, CMC was gone. B That's Baker a Mayfield what if, was it gone. Didn't happen. Hold on, hold on. If you take all of that into account, right? Those that's where we are right now. That's where our roster is right now. Our roster, we would have been above 500. There are so many teams, so many games that we came this close to winning because of stupid stuff because of but whatever. But it didn't happen. But that was before Steve Wilkes took over. The most important right. part of this is you've got to look and at where we ended the And the same thing happened team. with him. No, it, it wasn't did not. That sig no, did we almost, we could have won the Ravens game. We could have won the foul. We didn't almost, it wasn't like all of a sudden he was, it was so much better. Yes, but it was not like yeah, it, nah, it was it without was. flaw. We were competitive. Yes, it was. We were competitive. No, he was without flaw. In a way we didn't we beat never the Bucks. We were up 14 before. points. We didn't beat the Steelers. They were never as competitive. Good as we were never even competitive. I appreciate. Look, I All think CK's point. I want to just. All I want to do is what I'm trying to say, CK, is I understand your analogy about the businesses, but sure. I think that the the flaw in the analogy is that you're saying that Frank Wright took over a business that has turned a profit. And what I think he's taken over is a business that's just hemorrhaging less money. Then, you know what I'm saying? is like, yeah, they were hemorrhaging $20 million. And then, yeah, two years later, they're hemorrhaging $5 million. But okay. guess what? They still ain't turned a fucking profit. I would argue and that I don't we think are in a single even. place we can say we don't have a quarterback. We don't have, we're bottom five in everything. We're top, like, where is but, but this guess, supposed what, success? We're, we're, we're top five in special teams. Our defense was turning a corner. There's a lot of things to improve upon, but we had a lot of injuries. And the okay. only thing on our offense that we're missing is maybe a tight end and may in the quarterback. So we are Crazy. breaking. So I'll even concede a part of that. I will say we're not making money, but we're not losing money right now either. So you, Boy, you if got we're some rose about that analogy, glasses. So what that means is we are a quarterback away from this team being the team, Ooh. and and that's and that's why it's important. That's why it's it is easy to look at these rosters and say Steve will or um uh uh, uh Reich Frank Reich is right. going to be taking over a better situation than Matt Rule had, and it's not even close. And by the way, before we go on to the cat calls. Because I'm so fucking done with this stupid ass conversation. Uh, it, I put. Wait till you see what I messaged you. 
is the team that Frank Wright is inheriting substantially better than the team Matt Rule inherited? So far, 74% of people say yes, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So right I'm, now, you're on I'm, the I love side it. of the your argument. I love it. A lot of people voted for Biden, too. Calls, so. man. <laughs> I am tired. No, man, you didn't so. come here for me to agree with y'all, did you? Mm. No, I mean, whoever expects you no to fun. do that, you yeah. know? That would be and crazy. you're wrong. But all right, yeah, you already good. know the deal. 252-228-5098. Get your call. So what are your thoughts on catcalling? Yeah, it's pretty sh- You shouldn't do that to somebody. And how did that make you feel? Uh, very uncomfortable. So how do you think catcalling makes the person feel? It feels good. Like and a three and a four and a lose that cat sitting in the back corner with his face buried in his nose. Who's that kid that can use one? Um, I saw the press conference of the new coach. Really, I mean, I know everybody wants to say, like, oh, did you grade how you feel about the press conference? Man, the press conference is the press conference. I'm like, you don't win me with the press conference. You win me with, with, the, with what you put on the team, how you coach on the team. Like, that's how you win me. The introductory press conference. That's not winning. The seat that I mean, that's that's easy to win. That's easy. Well, you have to, to win it. It's like getting the first round draft uh, pick. Hey, I'm a good coach. I'm gonna be soon sure be a great coach, and we gonna do all this. We gonna do all these imaginary things and stuff like that. But you know, it's go time now. Like, right? who you picking? Who you drafting? Who you putting on your scout teams and stuff like that? What what kind of players are you getting? And how you coaching them. And then how the game is going to go. That's, that's just me. And to me, I ain't care. Whether Steve Wilson would have been the head coach or, you know, or him. You know, him being the head coach. To me, you got to win 10 plus games for me. Ten? You got to win 10 plus games. You know, this is easy. Yeah. I mean, I won't say easy, but, you know, the division is wide open. One seven games. Oh, seven. With a, with a seven. body up, you know, we had talent, but still we didn't have no quarterback. So better get you a quarterback, we better win 10 games. Ten, I know no, people say, we well, give it time. And we stuff won like seven that. last year. Yes, no, 10 games. Win a division. Ten. That's all I want to see. Wow. It's success, guys. Call in at 252-228-5098. Is 10 games the success number for Frank Reich? Good God. Yeah. That yeah. was his I, number the first year in Indianapolis. He had Andrew yeah. Luck his first year. But, hey, does that if, mean, but we don't know who our quarterback is going to be. If we, not get Andrew Luck, right? if we get our quarterback right, if we get our quarterback right, um, right now there's not a single team in the NFC South that shouldn't be when we shouldn't beat, right? So that That's means true. six games right there just in the Yo, NFC crazy. South. Um, mm-hmm. Now it's not a guarantee, but right. you know if we're if we're if we get the quarterback, if we get that short up, um, then this that that's an easy six right there, and to as, assume that we can't get four out of the remaining what eight uh, nine games after that, You're I right. think would be difficult. I mean, y'all y'all right. I mean, with this championship roster, yep. I mean, they should get ten games at the minimum. I mean, good God, this roster you inherited is fucking incredible. The number is 252 228 5098. What's going on, C3 Nation? It's your boy, JM. Um, I saw the press conference of the new coach. This is the first really, one. Really? I mean, yeah, I know was, everybody was wants one? to be like, yeah, all right, thank you. Did you grade the high you? Hey. Oh, yeah, hey, no, no, hey. He said he wanted me to play a second one. Sorry. Hey. 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 You know who the fuck it is? Bricka, bricka, bricka! I don't know what happened in that first call. I don't know if my call dropped. The fucking weather here in Utah has been outrageously fucking cold. I love how he So I don't know if I lost Utah. service or what my the fuck is going on. But uh, let's jump into this. I want to give out my, once again, I want to give out a shout out to my two niggas, C Dog and that nigga G Kabashi, AA. What's good with you boys, man? It's a beautiful fucking day. It's a new day in the Carolinas. Um, there's a lot of fakeness, a lot of fraudulent motherfuckers that are going around. 
uh, Cody Lack, the best thing that you ever told me to do was get Twitter. Um, a lot of motherfuckers <laughs> say one thing on the panel, then they go around to Twitter and they say a total, totally different fucking, uh, a totally different thing with their little Twitter fingers. Y'all make me fucking sick, bro. Oh, wow. Panther Pickers, you make me <laughs> fucking He should get some sick. nausea medication. He's getting the sick all the time. fucking two years, know, you right? can say CJ's trash. Always CJ Stroud is fucking complete trash. Not worth trading up for. Waste of time. Bryce Young, too small. Blah, 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 blah. And now you're over here tweeting that you want to fucking trade up to go get Stroud, bro. You made me fucking sick, bro. You Kim Kate dick jumping motherfucker. You've been on my ass for how long about this motherfucker? Now you want to jump yes. shit? Pay nah, bro. Stay the fuck over there. Baby. I want all you fans yeah. motherfuckers to stay all over there, bro. I've been getting fucking other, blasted. I've been getting fun. fucking blasted during the off season and during the fucking season. Over what? Smartness? Like, come on, bro. This is some fucking bullshit, G. But uh, I want to talk about Frank Wright. I'm impressed. I like the press conference. I loved, you know, some of the shit he said. Of course, the highs, we want to be championship, and the lows, we want to be playoffs, of course. Who wouldn't want that shit? I definitely want that. Um, <laughs> I like seeing some of the players that, that, were, that were there. But I'm going to call was, that voice. That was, uh, let me ask you guys this about the... Some of the people I know, and G Baby was one of them, were irate about uh, Nicole Tepper being part of the hiring process. Like they went nuts about it, complete nuts. There was a real, and I, I don't know if this was across the board in the entire press conference because they welcomed all of Frank Wright's uh, people from like his mom to it. Yeah. You know, I mean, they didn't, but they a- and introduced everybody. It was great. It's nice. But Nicole Tepper has continued to be front and center. And the thanks. I don't mind it. Tepper, the whole, no, I mean, and I don't have opinion about I whether she should or something, that. but I'm just saying it's a reality. Is I, she is a big yeah. part of this organization and him and his life second wife but i mean it's just a reality that's all i'm can, saying can it's i there. say what i think is happening i think david tepper is getting tired of media and i think he's about to hand the reins over to nicole tepper to be the face of the ownership team not a bad idea i'd rather watch would her you? than him yeah. i would yeah i would <laughs> yeah i was literally about to say i like her better than him anyway one she's yeah. personable well, duh Two, Way hotter than and David Tepper. Way better dude. to look at. Yeah, but also, dude, like you know, look, man. The fact of okay. the matter is, she's there. No, 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 she's no, no, present. No, no, no. Let me finish it. No, let me. The fact of the matter is, and shout out to Lynn Leon Hart in our chat. Women love football just as much as men do, and I think you know uh, it, it's it is good to have the female voice in the front office. And, you know, women are more intuitive. They get a better feel of things. They have man, that's stereotyping. That, 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 that that to, whatever, man. There's that's a difference stereo, that's between sexism. men and women, and I feel like you He's need right. that feminine. You need that feminine that's energy sexism. in the front office. Sometimes I love it. I have no problem with Nicole Tepper, and I have no problem with her being a. a no one has part a problem with her. I'm not saying I had a problem with her. I'm just saying she was. She's been very present. Mm-hmm. That's it. It's just an observation. And I'm telling you that I and don't I mind. And I think CK that. is absolutely right. I think that, and that is what I would ultimately do. How many people are these? Think of what Frank Wright said today about, oh, we're a football family. I'm all about the X's O. And she goes out into the community. Like it is the tandem. So I do agree with that. But Cody, that's just straight sexism to say in here. I'll give you an example of this. When I was the first time I ever voted in an election, like a man, I was a I was 18 years old and I went and voted and I think it was the 2000 pre- like election president. So it was a presidential. You get to vote for everything. It's fun. Mm-hmm. Your 18th birthday, not birthday, but year. Mm-hmm. And I got to the judges and it's like district judge for Pitt County. And as a child, I remember being a child, 18 years old, and I voted for only women. And I said this, the rationale in my head was, is, oh, they're more empathetic. 
maybe they will handle the court system better. It's a total bullshit fucking idea. And I'm not trying to diminish her presence there. I'm saying yeah, you by saying she suck. is an empathetic. You had to learn just, the hard way. I think no, you were just I'm saying because she no. is sensitive. No, you, no, no, Cody, no. you, I'm Cody, you are what, what, what? Okay. have a better feel. Y'all are going to come back and they're, appreciate they're my able, position. Uh, just, uh, when, women no. are able to feel things intuitively the generalization. that men just don't. Listen. I agree with you on this, okay? Just so we know we're on the same stance with this, but you can't use that in an argument because you cannot use a stereotype, a positive stereotype for somebody in an argument if you can't use a negative one. Here's, you just can't do it. Here's what I would argue against with Cody. Um, <laughs> you can't do that. I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't I say, all up. I wouldn't, uh, to, to generalize this over the entire gender is, is to, I, what I will say in a vacuum, Nicole Tepper is much more empathetic from the looks of outside than David Tepper is, right? And I think that she is a much more personable person. Um, and so when I think about her getting behind the camera or in front of the uh, reporters and answering questions, I feel like she is going to have a lot more uh, of uh, of uh, charisma in her answers and her speaking with uh the fans and, and things like that than David Tepper has. David Tepper has just been awkward in most of his inter interactions with fans and the media. Certainly. Mm -hmm. I just think that you, Cody, continue to go, oh, she's empathetic. Why don't you just say she's more intelligent? Right. And that's kind of my, that's what I mean, I mean by that is I think you're point. trying okay. to pander no, 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 to no. feminism. Exactly. No, I'm not. You're, you're, no, no, you're no, trying no, to no. say There's that's very intelligent. Intelligent. Just say she's you're, fucking better than David Tepper. You're trying to say that's true. I would is, agree with there you. Is, yeah. There is it, there is intelligence and then there is emotional intelligence. And she's a dumb and girl. I, and I believe and I believe that CK is right. David Tepper not only does he not come off very empathetic. But a lot of the stuff that he says, like he kind of mumbles through a lot of the sentences that he says. Whereas I feel like with 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 the woman and specifically with Nicole, Tepper, he's an asshole. Let's just be honest. He's kind off. of an asshole. Right. Okay, so then that makes my point. She has advantages over him. <laughs> Not being an asshole. Kind of stuff. <laughs> That's awesome. I, I, I all just, right. All I got you. Is, no, I mean, I think I get, again, I get what you guys are saying, but I think you guys miss sometimes what you're saying. I don't give it. If I'm sexist, you know. so okay. fucking what, yeah, dude? That's because, I ain't changing next my girl. opinion for Let's go to the shit. next girl. <laughs> nah, you know what? She might be a better uh, um, leader of the Carolina Panthers than David Tepper is. How about I think, she, hey, I think she's a better yeah. face she of could the be. ownership. She could be. I mean, yeah. just give it like he's the financier. Yeah, I agree. Man, she I could be it, a better president. She could be a better communicator. She could be all of those. And I think that might be the case, honestly. Yeah. I By agree. the way, Lynn Leonhardt, a woman, says intuitive abilities are valid feminine skill practiced by many, mm. not all women. Shout out to Lynn. I, I, and that, that's kind of, like right. I said, I'm getting to the point where, where you got to watch how you work stereotypes because you can't have a stereotype that's that's – positive for you and use that but if i were to say well she's not gonna do good because she's a woman she's not strong well that's a story what about men I, are I can't use that negatively you wouldn't want let me use that negative i can't say because women are more well, there's positive men have more there's upper body negative. strength exactly. might just but be a reality you can choose which ones you want to use well, all have, stereotypes yeah. are stereotypes i'm sorry guys i did this <laughs> no, this is my fault hey, what's the uh what's the some next call stereotypes yeah, are are true man my fault. I picked a fight with CK. See, I made CK <laughs> mad. He never gets mad. Let's go to the next call. What's up, guys? It's Chase from Anderson. For all the people who okay. want to uh, wait about a quarterback and build a team first and then put a quarterback in place, blah, de, blah, de, blah. De. <laughs> the 49ers are a perfect example of why if you don't have a quarterback, it doesn't matter how good you are. Look how good they are. I'm a, look at their team they got. It's probably the best roster in the league minus a quarterback. And what did it get them? It got the ass whooped. I don't want to hear about this. Oh, Jimmy G was not playing. Brock Purdy got injured. They're a bunch of bums. They're not franchise quarterbacks. They're not. 
So you, you, you get a quarterback and you build a team around the quarterback to fit that quarterback. You don't build a team and hope you can find a quarterback that fits your scheme. That's not how it works. So needed. So this coming draft need to do what needs to be done to move up to get C.J. Stroud or Bryce Young in that order. Yeah, you got a quarterback and you matter, or you don't have a quarterback and you don't matter. If you have a good team like the 49ers, all it's going to get you is consistently consistently drafting at the bottom of the draft out of a reach of a possible franchise quarterback. I see if they even have a uh, Great point. draft fix then. Great call. Great call. I want to talk about the quarterback situation, what we gleaned from that in the Frank Wright press conference today. I made a top five kind of list of what I took away. We talked about one of them already before we went in this rabbit hole of arguing over rosters and now feminism and sexism and equality in America. But one of the things that uh, we go back to is uh, the Carolina Panthers have not had an answer at quarterback. And that, again, goes back to my roster thing that I was trying to tell you all. I mean, it's still in flux. He knows that. And he comes from a team where they were in flux for four years, four different quarterbacks, different styles. He did adapt. And there's some good things about that. But the question is, do you draft a guy? What do you what type of traits does this guy want? If you go into free agency, he said everything was on the board the draft, free agency, and if it wasn't, you would be silly, and he's completely right about that. But what I love to hearing about Frank Wright and his just commitment to that the game is always changing, it really felt like a man who was very comfortable with this. If you're not evolving, you're dying. And he didn't – the idea of a mobile quarterback is not incongruent with the idea of a guy who can pass in his mind – and in fact, the right. what is incongruent is a guy who can't run with the NFL at this point. It's like sure. you're the top one percent of the world or the one percent of the one percent. Why can't you throw and run the fucking ball? That's where we're at. This well, ain't your the, uh, grandpa's NFL no more. I really love call because he it was a perfect segue to what we're talking about here. So this is from our good buddy, old pal, David Newton. He says the Panthers are currently about $9.56 million in the red and cap space, even with the new extended salary cap. They also have a little over $10 million left over from the 2022 cap. That will help. Reworking the contract of linebacker Shaq, Tom- Shaq Thompson should be a priority. He says this is good news as Carolina has most of the key players under contract for 2023 big exception is quarterback that's another quarterback in the first round and sign a vet at a bargain now he's talking about and i love what the caller said that even if you have a really good defense a really good offense the san francisco 49ers are never around the quarterback because every time they do they either get hurt or they're trading for one or they're bringing I think that's in a little their, unfair to look at the injury. Round pick. I mean, listen, all the, the only point that I'm making is I'm bolstering the caller's point that traditionally you make sure that you have a quarterback and you're able to build that team around them and based around what their strengths are. And I think that's a great point. Do you believe that quarterback to be the Panthers are in the position this year to start to do that, to build around their specific quarterback of choosing. I don't like the San Francisco analogy for a couple of reasons, though, Cody. One is this, is uh, their team, A, is like around outside the quarterback position is like so far head and shoulders above the Carolina Panthers in every dimension. But the other thing is, is that I think if anybody realized that the the San Francisco 49ers need to realize that they've done every single thing you could possibly try to do to get the quarterback situation right. And the time they got it right was when the last pick in the draft kind of stepped into the place. You know what I'm saying? They, they tried to get Tom Brady at one point they brought back, they had the whole fucking crazy thing with uh, Garoppolo. They traded up to get, they did all the things 
that everybody is telling us you have to do to win. What I think they have showed you is that they recognize without a quarterback, you can't. They, I mean, think about it. They were <clears throat> arguably going to be, they could have made the Super Bowl with the last pick in the draft. They had the, such a good team that they almost, they were competitive with Christian McCaffrey as their quarterback. It was like 7-7 at the end of the first quarter. The first, I mean, it was not like, I mean, it, it was clear that the Eagles were so much of a better team at that moment. But if Brock Purdy stays in there, I don't think it's like, oh, such a blowout. I think the Eagles still win. But you got to think that is like even they realize without a quarterback, you toast. The best, I mean, they know it. That's the point. If you don't have a quarterback, you're dead on you arrival. Toast. And and I believe a lot of what Frank Reich said in his press conference today kind of confirmed that notion. Um, hey, so I what wanted do you do? To, uh, well, okay, so let's let's get into that. What do you Is do? That, right. Yeah. So let's look at the options that we have available. And right now, let's just look at some trends, shall we? Frank Reich, if you look at all the quarterbacks that he has coached. There's something in common with all of them. He likes the big boys, six foot four and above. In fact, he hasn't coached a quarterback that has been shorter than six foot four. Now, that doesn't this necessarily is stupid. never, this but is the dumbest I, thing. No, I think what it, why you always got to do it before I'm even done? Look, Go ahead. Go ahead. he has a, a type, he has a type, he likes. You know, if you, I mean, not every guy on this list fits the criteria, but the big, strong, mobile quarterback tends to be something that he does well with. Specifically, this is corollary. This is just corollary evidence. Uh, uh, Carson Wentz for a time was also very mobile. And I mean, look, th thinking about this, it's easy to see why if he were drafting a quarterback. Why he might want somebody like an Anthony Richardson or like a Will Levis, someone who has a lot of tremendous upside and ability to be able to tap into. I, I really do think that's going to be important for them going forward. Now, this is kind of oh, off yeah. topic. Move on, move on, because you just no. put up a bunch of corollary evidence that has nothing to do with anything. Is that he didn't have to? He didn't have any choice. Go back to that list. The only one player that he brought in, arguably, is Carson Wentz. He didn't have right, nothing to do Andrew with Luck. Andrew Luck. He didn't have nothing to do with Bruce. He didn't have nothing to do he with the selecting of these the people. He chose to go to the Colts because of Andrew Luck. So then, he brings and remember, in, he, had, he, br he had he had Carson. Yeah, Wentz no Peyton Manning. That. When did he have Peyton Manning? He didn't have Peyton Manning. Yeah, that ain't right. Or well, he no, no, he did when he was like he, he was in Indianapolis before. Like uh, he got let go the year that they um that yeah, he wasn't went. the coordinator. Yeah, they sucked for luck. Okay. Yeah, but okay. he was he wasn't like in. I just yeah. think this is like you might be right that he likes guys that are big, but this is not. This is just fodder. This is corollary evidence. Go to the next one because I'm not wooed by this. I mean, what do it's something he didn't have anything so to it, do with it, picking any of these motherfuckers, man, except for Carson well, Wentz. I, I mean, it, it, again, he chose to go to the Colts because of Andrew <laughs> he Luck. Chose, he was their second choice, bro. What the fuck you did? Remember, if you have they, a he was he like got Andrew that job. Luck, he didn't choose to go. He didn't have no other day. Y'all crazy. You crazy. Whatever, he, Your he revisionist went, history. He, no, he didn't no remember Carson they hired Wentz. McDaniels? He they hired Carson McDaniels and he went playing his best football ever, big, big arm, and mobile, and that's who he had most of his success with. And he left then for he a head coaching job. Andrew what an Lutt. idiot. Then Andrew Lutt does all those things that I just mentioned. So, yeah, you do have to right. have to mention Go to the next slide. All Tell us the now. guys that he have brought in. No, I'm not going to the next fucking slide because I'm right and you're wrong. Then he brings in Matt Ryan, also a six foot four. By the way, Coach Nick Foles in the Super Bowl, six foot six. Yeah, size does. Now, whether or not we go with the big quarterback, who knows? But I mean, hey, I'm noticing a trend here. It's irresponsible. No, this is my guy. To, 
I've it. been telling you. Well, people are down on him. So this is the rumor like mill it. right now from Tony Pauline says he hasn't like spoken to anyone who believes Will Levis is a good quarterback. Athlete, God. yeah. Big on That's a fucking mean thing to say. No, <laughs> bullshit. You know what? Fuck this dude. Come on. Nate, like he has he can't even he can't even talk to his mom. Dude, almost That's a everyone mean believes ass that. Like, this, but this is true though. Everyone thought that he needed to go to the senior bowl to continue to prove himself. And, and they and said no one thinks he's good. Go. Dude, that's that mean. Bro. I just I just fall back on this argument once again. Yeah. The same thing with the senior Asshole. bowl and and with the the combine. Is that one more time seeing them really going to make or break your decision? Like, does Who the body of work they put together mean nothing? Yeah. Like, Who is Tony tell you Pauline? how it did. It did it. It did it for Justin Herbert. It did it for Jalen Hurts. It did it for Josh Allen. Yeah, it, it boosted their morale. For, but 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 they, but they were but they were going to be the same. They were going to be the same player yeah. whether they went to the Senior Bowl Ellen, or they went to the Combine. They were going to be the same Gray. player. And 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 seeing them do the Underwear Olympics one time or play a few more plays in one game was not going to convince you whether they were better or worse. And if that convinced you, you're a bad judgment of character. Well, if a whole body if, if a whole body of work is there and one game film, changes your opinion. That's bad. If your college film says that there are things that you have a hard time doing from a from a X's and O's standpoint, and mm -hmm. then you go to Mobile with professional coaches mm -hmm. who then put you under center, they put you under situations that you're going to be in in the NFL. And if Not you thrive, no, 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 no. If you thrive under those scenarios, a lot of the players have never been under center. They're going to be under center at the senior bowl. That's a big deal when it comes to college quarterbacks. So it shows it, it, it shows talent if, yeah. that you have the ability to pick up new things fairly quickly. And you show how you relate to other teammates, to competitors around you. How do you interview with all the coaches that are there? It matters. And I guarantee you people are starting to doubt Will Levis because of his inability to want to go and prove himself. What if he's hurt? Yeah. I mean, there's... It doesn't help the doubts. <laughs> well, no, but he's like still... you, give, you guys give it. There's going to be, not you guys, there's going to be a million people up here telling us how Hendon Hooker is a great pick. But he's rehabbing. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, at the end of the day, is that he, this is a weird post, if you think about it. Mm -hmm. It's like, look, no one believes he's a good quarterback. So he is like worse than Taysom Hill from this post as a prospect. And then the next thing is, it's like, oh, big arm thrower. Yeah. But if he was any good, he would fucking play this one game. Right. Exactly. I mean, it's well, kind of, this is kind of a yeah. salacious post. Well, the uh, the part of it that that I think is is kind of lost in this is how so. For instance, Will Levis, uh, or let me let me well, go that's back who we're to, talking about. to um to Trevor Lawrence. Right, Ooh. he had proved himself enough to where he didn't even have to basically go to the combine. He didn't right. have to do anything because he knew he was going to be drafted number one overall anyway. Now, how many of these guys, if they don't go and prove themselves at the combine? It, see, if you're if you're drafted in the first round because you're considered that, that high of a prospect, the noise starts to get really loud for you to be the starter on a team. Whereas if you're drafted in the third, fourth round, like say Matt Corral, for instance, the 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 noise starts to be, you know, he was the third round quarterback. He's never really going to deserve a shot at starting in the NFL, right? So, and a lot of these guys earn that first round draft pick, earn that, or they slide because of of their inability to perform. And so if you if you trust in your ability, um, if you haven't shown enough on paper to say that you're a first round draft pick, you absolutely need to go to the combine. You need to go to these other uh, to the to the senior bowl to be able to show what right. you're capable of doing. Now, the what other if part he's of this, a second round pick, though, that doesn't mean he, he's still not a good quarterback. It, it Jalen means he's not gonna get his, he might not get the same opportunity to be an actual starter in this league, though. True, That's the true. thing. Right. Is, is how many. How many quarterbacks, like I can tell you, it, my own opinion about quarterbacks is there are probably so many quarterbacks that are seen as busts that were just never given an opportunity because they weren't considered a high quality draft pick. Like right? who? 
Um, you know, I, I, think the about thing. it. Think about it. No, think about that's it. The, no, that's I don't want to over put you on the spot, but I don't want you also to say that and just be able to get away with it. No, I'm. I mean, I'm, Jay, not, I'm not. I don't have an opinion. That but like, somebody who in is mind? that what I'm person? Is how many, let, let's talk about Brock Purdy. He would never have gotten the shot that he did if somebody didn't get hurt. He but went he to a team as a third either, string quarterback. <laughs> like, you say? I mean, the, the 49ers are already <laughs> in thoughts about this is like, thank you for your service, Brock, Brock Purdy, but they're not necessarily going into the next year as him saying. Know. Like, he was a pleasant surprise, sure. but right now after that injury, he uh, could be gone. Right. What I'm just that, saying is this, is who are those people? I mean, I think Brock Purdy is – that's a, isn't that the most extreme example? The last person in the draft who had some success. It's the only but, example you can point out because nobody that's drafted in the fourth or fifth round gets a shot like that. That's what Russell I'm saying. Wilson. Heck, Prescott was a fourth round pick. Exactly, and it Russell took Wilson. Romo getting <laughs> hurt. That, but those are all examples. I'm just saying, who's the that's, second round pick that got overlooked? That who's the f- late first round pick? You can't you can't point them out because they never got the shot. Okay. That's what I'm saying. And, okay, and I, I I get what you're saying there, CK, and you're, what you're saying it, it, it's right. You're right. Some of them never get an opportunity, but the thing is, I, y'all are not wrong about saying that them going to the combine the senior bowl is going to do this. What I'm saying is that's stupid. I'm not saying it's not <clears throat> going to happen. It's stupid. Like Cody, you say that you want to put them in a position in the combine where they're you don't see them in college. You put them under center, senior bowl. and it's going it's going to put our senior ball. Okay, or you're going to put them in the combine because it's going to give them situations. Colts, coach, get them to Matt check Rule. Them out how they're going to do? Well, guess what? In the combine, you're playing uh, in shorts. There's no pass rush. There's no crowd. There's no pressure. There's no, of the it's game. not even a game there's, at the combine. It's not even a game. They're they're telling you this guy's going to run this route. Drop back, throw it. Let's see what you do. That's not a game situation. So the only thing going to the combine. I'm not do, talking yeah, about the combine. Talking, no, I'm talking about. Right. He's right. He's not talking bowl. about the and that, and that is an actual game. But do they even play where the whole senior bowl? They will do some NFL. No, concept. they don't play. Do they they play it's the like an all star game. Like the no. They yeah. rotate yeah. in and out. And still, you, if you're a quarterback wow. and you've never played under center or you've never played against, you know, uh, uh, you know, power five competition so like Jordan Love, Jor- Jordan Love, what Jordan Love was another guy coming from Utah that needed the senior bowl to continue to, to, what? Improve his to sit. Uh, we've never even seen Jordan Love play a single fucking game in the NFL. So I what mean, did the senior bowl do for him? Bad. Shut up. He was Not, drafted the that. first Three. round. Three it, matters where, it matters where they're convince, drafted. All right. This is what's wild about this is that when you want that argument to work, you make it. When you don't want it, you don't make it. And I'm not saying you guys, but I'm saying anybody, is that someone who doesn't have a good performance at the Senior Bowl, you say, look at their tape. Someone at the combine, you say, look at their tape. And then when they have a really great combine or really about this, and you say they have bad tape, you say, don't be fooled by this. So I don't know. Is that I don't know if my idea, maybe Will Levis, if he just fucking slayed, and uh, like at the senior bowl and then went to the combine and slayed, he goes from top 10 to top three. But Good like, time. I think he could, like he didn't fall into the second round by not doing this, but I might be wrong. Maybe. Yeah. You don't know mm-hmm. that. Hey, you know. how CK about froze. Yeah. I, froze for a second. Let me okay. so um, I, I, want, I, want, I want to say one thing and I'll pass the mic. If, okay, Matt Corral, everyone says, Oh, he's a third round quarterback. How do he, he do in the senior RPO bowl? No offense. No, but okay, he wasn't able to play because he was hurt. So oh. uh, what I'm trying to say is imagine if Matt Corral was able to play in the senior bowl and had an incredible performance that might help a, people a believe, ifs. okay, a guy can do more than just a play action pass, RPO type stuff. He one had drive, one drive, and we're like, "Oh my God, he's so fucking Cody." So he goes, so Cody, if, if he goes there, by the what way, if he goes... this is common knowledge amongst NFL scouts. Everything that means no, let's see who. Well, all right, I'll see what the stats knowledge. were. For and and the you know what? NFL team, scouts though. never get it wrong either, Cody. You're right. They they all they, they never get it, get it wrong. Here's my <laughs> so, so. here's here's what I wanted to say. If 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 this is in fact, here's my 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 counter to this, and I I don't want to have my counter just be a um, if if this isn't true, then this has to be true, right? Um, but 
if if this is in fact a, a real a pointless endeavor, why does anybody accept the invite? Why do all thirty two teams right. bring their scouts? Why do all thirty two teams show up right. to right. evaluate every one of these seniors at the Senior Bowl? If it that's didn't a good, matter, that's a very good point. Two reasons. If it didn't matter, why are they showing up? Two Can reasons. I read you the stats from last year's Senior Bowl? Yeah. Go ahead. Um, Kenny Pickett went six for six, 89 yards and a touchdown. One good drive, right? Executed as he was supposed to. Desmond Ritter, same team, next uh, dr- next quarterback in, four for six, 68 yards. Carson Strong, six for 11. On the other side, the American team, Bailey Zab went eight for 13, 103 yards and interception. Sam Howell went six for nine, 67 Malik Willis went two for four and 11 yards. How about this? Is Malik Willis still was what the second quarterback picked in this draft? Is that true? Was he? Maybe he was a third. Maybe uh, Ritter went before him. I can't remember. Pickett, yeah, Pickett, then Ritter, then Willis. uh, What I'm saying is this is the best person in that stock was Kenny Pickett. He He did the best you can do six for six, 89 yards, and a touchdown. But like, does that really? I mean, he still was. It didn't propel him into the top hey, five. Hey, how about how, how about this? If you want, if you want to say, okay. and then I'm gonna let Greg go. I think CK made a great game. point. Mm-hmm. If you want, right? And if you want to say it's a meaningless game, how about Josh Allen, Kenny Pickett, Carson Wentz, Baker Mayfield, Mac Jones, Justin Herbert, <laughs> Jalen Hurts, Dennis, Dak Prescott. Derek Carr, Jimmy Garoppolo, and Kirk Cousins all decided to play in the Super Bowl. I mean, that's how many of those motherfuckers have Bowl? you? How many of these people, the those guys, have you? And you and you are podcast? lying to your and you are lying to yourself if okay. you feel like like that like it didn't matter to all of those players. Because it did. If you maybe think Patrick Mahomes would have gone top five fine, if he would have played no. in the Senior Bowl. I, Cody, I, I, I want to juxtapose up the, the list on that, the, the, the players you just said, of all the quarterbacks that played in the senior bowl that haven't done shit in the NFL. Because, I mean, it's, it's <laughs> going to be long. it's going to be much bigger, I'm sure. It's going to be much bigger. Saying, right, but you right, also, I don't want to over-argue about this. I want to answer CK's question, though. I got an answer for CK's question. To play. Yeah. All right, I got an answer for go. CK's question. He asked, why do all teams do this? There's three reasons right off the top of my head. One tradition. Okay, think about this. The NFL originally, we didn't have social media. We didn't have as much videotape as we could before. Scouts didn't get to see players like they did before. They've always ran the draft. It's part of tradition. It's what we do. Okay, and then the NFL. It's called the too. Reese's Bowl, too. By the way, sponsor. I have a rebuttal to this. Two, by the way, so this is okay. Cool. Two money, ahead. money. Okay, because they're going to make money by doing the by doing the combine because they brought they broadcast it on TV. Well, People we're talking about it. the Senior Bowl. Let's just stick with the Senior Bowl. The Reese's. No, it's called you, the Reese's C- Senior C- Bowl. C- okay. Yeah, I'm okay. talking about the Senior Bowl I mean, for it's, now. Yeah, it's I'm just literally yeah, I'm sponsored. This, this, this applies the same way. This applies the same right. way. Right? No, there's three. Ton you're, of looking, money in this. you're looking for depth beyond the players you already know or, or, or you've already evaluated as first round players. Okay, that's another Ooh. reason you go there. It's not just to go look at the Will Levises and the CJ Strouds. You're going to go look at that tackle that's predicted a third round guy that's playing in the Senior Bowl, and you want to see how he plays. There's more to it than just the top players they're evaluating. Sure. That's what the combine's for, too. I don't think that either one of those is for the players that you know are the top 10 players in the draft or are great at the top 10 players in the draft. Those guys, no matter what they do, whatever the, the teams they want, they're going to pick them. It's all the right. guys beyond that that you're going there to, to scout. My, my Except for all the top 10 that. picks that I just named. My, my rebuttal to that is these NFL draft or NFL scouts, GMs, are all extremely busy, and I can promise you tradition – play zero role in their want to go fly out to the senior bowl to watch these guys. The other part to this is you're right that they are going to see that, but by your own admission, you said that if you can't evaluate, if you can't evaluate them based off the tape, you already see, then how can we trust you based on, you know, or whatever you had said about it, them going to look at these guys. Right. So by that same admission, then there's no saying point. that. Yeah, well, no, basically, I, I did it was say, I did say that, lines, but, you, but you don't pay as much attention to a first round quarterback as you do a guy graded a third round tackle. Right. But you oh, also don't get your There's hands 500 on them people you, you in the world that. looking at quarterbacks professionally right. right now. And there's like one dude looking at linebackers out of the pack, whatever, like the 
Atlantic sure. Coastal Conference. Good point. Hey, yeah. let, let's read the super chat. chat. And, yeah. then, and we and have then a new member we didn't shout out. out. We have a lot of housekeeping to do. <laughs> so look, we haven't done White Chocolate this. Espresso, your bastard son, he says, what's the difference between the Senior Bowl and a regular college bowl game? Skipping your team bowl game is way more of a red flag. By the way, Will Levis skipped out on both of them. Skipped out on his bowl game. And wow. skipped out on the senior. Wow. Why bowl. are you taking out on him? Yeah, because don't fucking do Can't that. Defend okay. that. So, All right. so Chris here's do that. Can I, before you move on, the other part Chris of McCaffrey that McCaffrey left on his. his, yeah, his. his. Sure, uh, but I all, the the part of it that I, like for instance the yeah, Will Levis right, right? Mm-hmm. you're you're trying to prove that you are a top. Uh, let's okay. be honest, right now a top five quarterback, right? Mm-hmm. Right now there's so many and clearly he based on safe. the fact that these arguments. You're 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 going to see. I understand Bryce Young and C.J. Stroud not going right because mm-hmm. they've earned their spot as a top draft pick in the NFL. Okay, okay. who That's hasn't fair. earned their dra- top argument. draft pick is Will Levis, and so you need if you want if you're if you're really confident in your abilities as a quarterback, you go play the Senior Bowl. You go play. You go to the yes. the, the combine. Unless you're hurt, I, I, I agree with that. You're trying to shade stuff. your injury a little bit. So you're not making the narrative of being sure. hurt. And you're just trying then to his people need to do a Pro better Bowl. job. Then his people need to do a better job <laughs> of saying how hurt he is. Because as of right now, the common knowledge is that he's still sometimes he's, saying uh, less. Apparently, is he is he is still training for okay. all this other shit, but he's not going to do any of this other stuff. We'll see so, how it pans yeah, out. I, I'm, a, I'm allowed. I'm allowed to think less of him for these decisions. Okay. Uh, my son says Levis is a guaranteed top 10 pick. And do you by any chance have our member from way early in the show who was starred? Can we give them a shout out? And we got to push through some calls. CK, you're up. Well, well, well. We missed you, but we came around and we found you. Tyler has said, I want to join the C3 Super Fan Club. He hit that join button that you can find right below the screen here. And you can join for only $1.99, I think it's what we have it set for right now. And you get all these incredible emojis, and Tyler has become one of the legends. Thank you, and welcome to the club. Welcome to 20C3. This is our year. We started out with an argument. This is the end of the 2022 uh, season for us, though. Our official season, next season, starts the week after the Super Bowl and you can be a part of it. The longest running Panthers podcast out there. Let's do another call. And then we got to get to some prize picks and we got to power through some information, folks. Stop Tony from arguing. That's what you all have to do. It's your mission in life. What's up, C3? Uh, this is Raleigh Panther calling in tonight. Hope you guys are having a good night. Um, you know, I got to say that this podcast was perfectly timed tonight with what's been uh, probably the most eventful day so far in the NFL offseason. You know, the two big hires in Sean Payton, D'Amico Ryans, and uh, obviously the first press conference from our new head coach, Frank Reich. Um, you know, I liked what I heard from Reich today. I thought he seemed a little nervous, but, you know, like in an endearing way, as if he's just kind of the guy that loves to coach football and doesn't necessarily love the spectacle that kind of comes along with it. Um, but I thought his messaging was clear. His plan of attack was strong. Um, you know, and he seems self-aware enough to know what the strengths that he brings to this team are. So, um, you know, I thought a good show of his character actually came off of Chris Jenkins' question today about the player's preference for grass over turf and, and if Reich had talked to Tepper about it. Um, you know, honestly, I thought this was kind of a, a trap question that pitted Tepper against his players and was almost forcing Reich to take sides. Um, I agree. He ended up a really truthful answer, and I, I don't think that he really gave – fodder for you know misguided media narratives to start up um but anyways my, my question for you guys tonight is more so centered around david tepper uh, i wanted to ask what you guys thought of the headline that came out in the last few days regarding the search to fill the coordinator positions uh you know the way that it was framed was that frank reich's choice may not have aligned necessarily with ownership's first preference the reporter, Josina Anderson, I believe, uh, you know, she seemed deliberate about that language. Um, I just wanted to ask if do you guys think that this is like a, a nothing burger story or is this kind of another example of David Tepper meddling in something that would probably just be better off handled by those around him? 
Um, would love to hear you, uh, your thoughts on that, and I hope you guys have a great night. Peace. Peace. Appreciate you, man. <laughs> um, CK, do you want to jump on this first? I know you said earlier that you were very uh, uh, complimentary uh, of Matt Rule recently and how he's handled things. But you know David what, CK? Before you answer that, yeah, David Tepper, before you answer that, let me push you on the spot a little bit. Because guess what? We got another new member, dude. Oh, shit. C3 is banging tonight. They like it when we have these toxic episodes where we're fighting all the time. So, talk to Well, well, well. We have yet another member of the C3 Super Fan Club. David Screws hit that join button. He said, I want to become a part of the elite group of fans that have decided to help support C3, continue to put out this content, continue to upgrade the content, and continue to show up week in and week out, regardless of whether uh, Tony is constantly wrong or not. Welcome to the C3 <laughs> Super Fan Club. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Right, go ahead with your point, CK. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, no, you're fine. I uh, I, I think at the end of the day, um, you know, there's there's a couple of things. I, I I said earlier, I think David Tepper is not a great people person, right? Um, and I think yeah. both of these things can be true at the same time. I think David Tepper and his team of people have made a really good decision, um, and they've they've addressed it appropriately. I've also been critical of the decision because I also don't know um, if this is a surefire win hire. But I tell you what, based on what we had available and what we've seen uh, i i think this is you know one of the top tier hires right um i just i think i would have preferred wilkes personally but um <clears throat> from the uh the perspective and what was the last part of that caller like he had he had wanted to address a specific point with david tepper oh it was the um the the, the, the offensive coordinators yeah. not matching up with frank reich i i don't i don't even know what that means like i really don't i mean we don't know who it is that he wanted or who it is that he didn't want um and and honestly, if it was that big of a deal, then I don't think that Frank Reich would have been hired. Right. Right. Can we also like, talk about how, how he wants to potentially call play? I mean, not potentially. He said were, he was, I hope he does. does. Me too. I love it. Me I too. hope he I does. I was all in on that. And I think that makes that less problematic, like you're saying, CK. is like that if that was a big issue, he wouldn't have been the hire from the first place. Right, right. So I don't, him I don't really calling plays. I think that is a big plus. Yeah, I think I think that the 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 news is tw you know tweet worthy, but I don't think it's newsworthy. Right, you, you understand what right. I mean? I like it's worthy of like reading in a tweet, maybe quote retweeting and saying like, "What does this mean?" But like, it's not worth an article of like concern. Right, um, it's not one of these things you're going to find on NFL Network with like, "Wow." There was a there was a, a a difference in opinion of who they wanted as their offensive coordinator between you know during the uh, the hiring process. Um, again, I think it's a big nothing burger. I think they're going to find somebody who's going to fit the uh, the what they the vision is of this offense. Um, and the hope is that it's somebody that's familiar with Reich. I, I don't I understand the urge to maybe go out and get one of the hot names, but I think somebody like. Uh, what is it, Ben Johnson? Um, from from the Eagles, who uh, has which I have questions. Who is this person? I thought Bri Stitches Brian Stichen. Johnson. No, yeah, no the, he was the head coaching the, candidate. No, who the so, hell is come? Who is Stich Who's this no, guy? Stichen this is, was the OC, quarterback coach. Okay. Oh, yeah. okay. Everybody he, loves his quarterback coach. Yeah. Well, I mean, when you're talking about going from an offensive coordinator, I mean, you're either hiring a fired head coach. Or you're hiring like a quarterback's coach for well, an people offensive have been coordinator. Calling yeah, him yeah. all day. Promoting. Them. I have a question for you, CK, but, and then we'll open yep. it to the panel real quick. Yeah. And it's kind of the 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 heart and soul of the question is who is <laughs> no who's a better hire, cl a clear better hire than Frank Reich. But I want to ask it this way: Who has a higher floor? and a higher ceiling together, right? Is I think that a lot of people, and this is going to be my kind of, and I'm not going to tell you who necessarily, but I think you either, I don't think you really say, oh, his floor is any lower than any other guy. And I don't think that for most people, you would say that the ceiling is much higher. 
You know, I mean, like, is that I don't know. I think that you, people want to believe that maybe the next young guy could be some superstar. But what is a? I just don't know if there's a candidate that collectively has a higher floor and higher ceiling. I think you might find somebody that has a little higher ceiling, but a lower floor. I think you might find somebody that has slightly or an equal. I don't know who is are you, are you a significantly better candidate that the Carolina Panthers could have hired. Are you talking about then uh, Frank Wright? Yeah. I agree. I, I and that's what I said in my, you know, uh, you know, you might have been stepping away. I said no. I just like, wanted to ask, like Claire, like can we say did the Panthers do anything? Could they have done better? And I don't know if they really no, could have. They couldn't have. I don't think that there is a shot that they could have done better um, because it was clear that uh, that a certain people wanted to stay with their teams. It was clear that w- we weren't going to be willing to pay the amount of money that we needed for Sean Payton. Um, I don't think that would be better, arguably, CK. I Listen, I would agree with you on that front 100% of the time based on how my opinion is of Sean Payton. But I also think Jim Harbaugh, right? I think he, if he was in the the running, Jim Harbaugh, hands down, would have been a better option. Um, I think now, would it have been head and shoulders above Frank Reich? I don't know. But it it would have been a undeniably a better option. The lead Um, horse. He's the lead horse, right? I agree with that. But outside, like I said, my own my personal pre- preference was Steve Wilkes, um, and right. and that high and, and, floor, yeah. high floor, but relatively moderate ceiling. Right, right. But that's and that's the thing, and, and I understand. And this is where I, you know, Cody was talking about. I'm going to be a little more complimentary of David Tepper. Like number one, I'll address a couple of things, and I'll be very upfront and honest with my opinions on a, a couple of these things, but. You know, he addressed the fact that he made a mistake with regard to Matt Rule. He said that I made a mistake. I decided to hire a head coach that was a CEO rather than a a efficient person on either side of the ball. Did he he say that that in his interview? Yeah. Wow. David Tepper said, I made a mistake. I didn't get to hear this. I didn't get to hear the Tepper comment. So that is... Wow, that's so, a big deal. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. that's a big deal. And so what, what we're learning is that, number one, he's learning from some of the mistakes that he's made. Um, but also, you know, one of the things, in, and we've talked about it ad nauseum, and, and the media has as well with regard to the race regarding, uh, you know, uh, Steve Wilkes and, and whether he was really given a fair shot. And, and when you look at the history of David Tepper, he has he is an un, like an undeniably diverse history of getting people an opportunity. And I mean, look want, at who our play our play by play guy is. Like right. everybody, there's play diversity. By play, the presidents, the you know, it's it, there's diversity. People are joking our, the cheerleaders earlier. Right. Well, let's even talk about Steve Wilkes for a second. Do you think for a moment Steve Wilkes would have been looked at as a defensive coordinator had he not been given the interim head coach position here? No, he would not have. I am sorry to tell you, he would have not been looked at twice for that San Francisco job. And so right now, Steve Wilkes has more opportunity because he was given the opportunity over many other people that were on this team as coaches. So if you want to, that, that's where I'm saying we've got to be able to, we got to stop calling people things that they, there's a clear track record, record that they aren't, right? There are so many, there is so much evidence that shows that David Tepper is not making hires based on skin color. And when you make that, that at, you know, put that at the priority of your opinion, then you're you're really diminishing when there's real problems. This is not a real problem. The problem down in Miami, probably a real problem. Right, right. The problem in Arizona when Steve Wilkes got fired, probably a real problem. Hell, you could even talk about Houston and and Lovey Smith if they didn't just hire D'Amico Ryan's, right? Like so, this one also just kind of sucks, and that's just the end of the world. Is that sometimes people go up for jobs and they're fully qualified and they just don't get them. Yeah, right. But at the end of the day, Frank Reich, at the end of the day, when we go back and look at the tape, there's a signif- There's one real difference. And Frank Reich, it can call the plays on offense. Yeah. And he's a former quarterback. And at the end of the that, that's a that's a real difference. It's not a this and that difference. It is what we have talked about for years on this podcast about moving to an offensive guy that can rebuild a system when the coaches get plucked and this and that. It's not a takeaway from Wilkes. It just says this. Wilkes, if you were a quarterback instead of a cornerback, you would have this fucking job. Yeah, You have the leadership skills. You have all of that. But the problem is that we just don't – you know that's not your side of the ball. Mm-hmm. 
Well said. Uh, yeah. So there's actually we have two clips that are kind of talking about all of the things that we're talking about. He even spoke on the Steve Wilkes issue. Like I said, give David. I'm Tucker glad he credit talked on he, this. He, he, I mean, yeah, he, this is a big yeah. deal. I thought he dodged it. I didn't see this, so I'm happy about this. No, so this is what you said about Matt Rule and the mistakes oh, oh, that he yeah. made. The challenge you have is, and I made this mistake. You know, I think it's a mistake to have a CEO type head coach. Okay, that's a mistake. Just in general, that's what I kind of believe. So I think you want to get somebody who's really good on offense or really good on defense. Okay. So that's basically well, what he has to say about, yeah. yeah, about the, um, and then also, uh, you know, we're talking about diversity and apparently he was asked about this as well. Uh, and this is what he had to say. This is from Vash Ty Hurt, the Carolina Blitz. And then I'm going to read some super chats. Executive team and inside the building. And look at who we have in different positions inside our building. Our president is a woman. We have uh, uh, probably the most, most diverse executive team in the NFL right now. We have two African Americans. Um, we are probably a minority of. That's white always people. weird when you start executive counting them. Right that's where it starts. That's America. Okay, that's the process, and that's the process I'm talking about here. You don't want an old boys network. You don't want, I don't care. The old boys network works all kinds of different ways. Okay. Unfortunately, it is a, in this case, it's a detriment because most of the old boys were white. So you, that should be your main focus. How do you break that old boys network? How do you break that process to get you that old boys network? You break the process by trying to get the best people possible in every rule you can do. That's Whether, a good answer. Um, the new That's a good answer. It to be an African-American woman. Whether it happens to be Frank Wright, who's a Caucasian male. I don't care who it is. Whether we go through um, um, offensive coordinator, defense coordinator, who is the best person? Not whether you had a formal relationship with him, not who you knew, but who is that best person? And some of that best person, as Frank said, oh, he needs to turn it back now. That chemistry, right? Rain that it in, David. But listen, oh, no. we hire people. We have, like I said, you have a $500,000 person come into our office, eight people see that person. The final decision will be, you know, might be the president of the organization, might be Frank. But when we're vetting head coaches, Scott should have an input, very big input. And and uh, Dan should have wife. a very big input into that process. I mean, those are the three guys that should have major inputs in, into that process. And we should be going through what about your wife? people who could be the best in that position. Now, they have to have a fit in there, but you want to break the old boys network. That's what the key is. is this is not a, you know... <sighs> A purple, orange, black, white. This is the old boys' network, and it works. Should have stopped talking a minute ago. Okay? And that's what you want to bring. He pulled a Tony, guys. He really started. He pulled a Tony. Yeah, nah, like he had some really good points, and then it was just like, man, we got it, we got it. Uh, well, purple, get black. The, you you get the essence yeah. of what he was saying. Yeah, you know? I don't want to just dismiss important conversations. Yeah. And feelings that people have and realities that are truly in the world. I don't want to dismiss right. those, sure. but I do want to say this. We're not say this, not like me, I'm like, but I said it last week. It's sadly the world's just unfair, mm -hmm. right? Like, I mean, it just happens that some people have money, some people don't. Some people, you know, what I mean, some I'm short, other people are tall. Some people get to dunk the basketball, some people don't. Right. I mean, sadly, the, the world does have realities to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think, though, to overlay entirely the Carolina Panthers head coaching search to the historical discussion of race makes it a difficult conversation for anybody to win or to profit or to like. I mean, it's like it's like you got to think about this. The Carolina Panthers are an organization that's like 30 years old. There's more nuances. Like, I'm not saying that that's not part of the reality of the world that the Carolina Panthers exist in, but there also is more to it than that. And the very fact to me is that they didn't interview. They didn't want to have a defensive coach. You know, at the end of the day, so maybe is this is like it does. It sucks for Wilkes. It sucks when you go in and you interview for a job and your resume is qual is comparable to the other person in some ways, or at least maybe not comparable. Maybe you don't have the experience, but you have the qualifications. You answer the questions well, 
How many, have you guys ever not gotten a job? I have. I've been yeah. to interviews and not mm -hmm. gotten a job. And at the same time, I don't think that at the, I'm not saying that there weren't, I look, sometimes it just doesn't happen. And mm -hmm. I'm not trying to dismiss anything, but I do think there is in the context of the Carolina Panthers being defensive, 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 and then a snake oil salesman. Like it was like, this is, we need that change of pace. So yeah. if we really want to argue a difference, maybe we should have hired a different offensive guy. You want to talk about that? I guess I don't, th I just think it was a real clear cut plans and welcome decision on my part. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, mean I, I have no no quarrel with the decision. Um, like I said, I just had... want an offensive guy. Yeah. Um, let's go to the next call. I think. This is Tanner up in Elkin. It's been a while since I called, but finally got something to be excited about. So I'm calling back. I'm saying, yeah, I wanted Wilkes as our coach, but we got Reich, and I'm pumped about it, and I've never been one to say, let's mortgage the future. You know, let's trade up, give everybody else our picks for the rest of eternity. But there's one guy that's worth doing that for. I'd say trust and trust. Let's go after Lamar Jackson. Let's get him. Let's bring him to Carolina, get this running yeah. quarterback, and get a championship hmm. team going. Thank you. I, I want, uh, I'm not Lamar taking Jackson. it. I know. I'll make you mad. Yeah, I, saying, I think we tackled this one quite a bit. Uh, have you heard about the recent rumors about no. him and no. Chicago and the three-way trade? Yeah. Going it, to Atlanta? Hey, who, said, who said that a few weeks ago? Didn't I say that exact trade a few weeks ago, Lamar Jackson and Chicago? Well, they're talking about also maybe Atlanta getting them in a three-way um, trade. Well, I don't know if anybody's saying who is going to get them. I think right now they're saying there's going to be a th there's a potential for a three-way trade between – of the Bears, Atlanta, and uh, and the Ravens, and the only thing that makes sense to me is the Bears to get Lamar, um, and then the Fields going to uh, to Atlanta, and uh, both Baltimore and or, or Baltimore getting both of the firsts for Lamar, essentially. Oh, from who? Oh, getting God. a first from uh, the Bears and a first from Atlanta. So Atlanta basically oh, giving away their like seventh for Fields. Um, and Chicago is giving away their first for Lamar, essentially. But both of those mm -hmm. first going to Baltimore is that that's the only thing you, know, you might not blame. Me. You might not blame any of them for it. And I've been a big fan of like, hey, I would take Lamar any day of the week. Sure. And I've also advocated that since Lamar has been all about that guaranteed money, we have one of the owners that actually can put the money in that required <laughs> escrow, escrow account man. that they have to do. But I just what you guys brought up with that tweet earlier about the salary cap. Like, I you feel like how. we would have to just cut the whole team. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, just like, really know I know there's magic you can do with the salary cap, but I don't think we're in the running for that, sadly. Um, scariest part about Lamar. Uh, do you guys, are you scared if he goes to Atlanta? No. What? Yeah. I am. Oh man, I'm, I'm scared. Doesn't terrifying. Fields come to Atlanta too? I don't want either one of them come to Atlanta. Yeah, you know what? You're right. Actually, when you put it that way, yeah. fuck that. Is um, I watched Mike Vick, that savage ass motherfucker, terrorize me through college and into the NFL. We drafted Thomas. I think it was Thomas Davis, specifically, to fucking deal with Mike Vick. Tired of that. Keep them motherfuckers out. Bring Matt Ryan back. Bring my, uh, uh, my <laughs> Matt Ryan. I don't my, want uh, none of that My shit. reason why I'm not so worried if they go to Atlanta is if you're having to pay him that amount of money and you're giving away your first, they're already a team that's in major need of pieces to be built up. Like, they are not a quarterback away. Didn't we split with them? No. No, we... Oh, yeah, we did split with Atlanta. We split with them, but we yeah, almost yeah. won that one. We should have won that it? one. Um okay. But uh, there have been a lot of should have tonight. Yeah, but that was PJ Walker, and that was that uh, that DJ Moore penalty, and then the I two remember. kicks from Eddie Pinheiro. I'm just um, saying, like, do but, they? But he didn't lose that game for us. Don't <laughs> 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 fucking so, start. <laughs> so, uh, you know, that's, that. that's why I say I'm like you're 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 talking about now giving away draft picks on top of that, 
you're going to be giving a guaranteed contract to a guy who's coming off of a potential knee injury, um, you know, on top of all of that. I'm not, I'm not, it, it wouldn't scare me as much because they don't have the team to build around him like he had the, the, in Baltimore. That's he true. would be, he would be in a worse situation and less protected. In a terrible division. You might, I mean, I mean, you might be right. Uh, people are asking this, Rem, we're going to go to the next call. I want you to think about this, guys, when it comes to, uh, should we trade if if we could trade with the Bears straight up our number nine for Justin Fields, right? Um, one of the things that has been interesting to me is that I was on that uh, draft show that 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 what two years ago when we yeah. picked J.C. Horn yeah. and I was yeah. I was all in on Justin Fields. Yeah, that's what I wanted. That's what I wanted. My question yeah. now, and I want you guys to think about it this as we listen to the next call. Is one of the things is we tell ourselves getting a quarterback in the first round gives you five years with him, right? Like you get this big window. Right. So if we trade for Justin Fields, we lose a little bit of that. We window. don't have the size of the window. Can I, also I understand say, that? But did you also sacrifice? Did someone else just do the developmental years for you? And you're but, getting the, you know, the kind of the guy who's been through the rhythm of the system, like he's not a rookie either. So I mean, it's only is there years. a big you difference? Is there a big difference? Time? Yeah, okay. well, but you've got to keep in mind on on that front. Justin Fields hasn't developed as a thrower as well as you think he should. As he should have by his second at the end of his second year. He has been a runner, and they have utilized him in that way. And you can blame the the coaching staff, but I'll tell you what: I'm tired of taking right. uh, quarterbacks that we blame coaching staffs for their failures, right? Um, yeah, that's fair. That's we're fair. over that. Um, so I would rather, to be quite honest, what Justin Fields brings to the table, you know, you might, and this is going to be controversial. I know it, but you might as well take Anthony Richardson. You know, you've got the same athleticism, if not more athleticism than Justin Fields with Anthony Richardson with a, a similar upside with the throwing talent or with the arm talent. Now, I, I will say I, I get what you're saying, Pilly, but I do think Justin Fields can throw the ball better. There's no wide receivers in in Chicago. Imagine what Justin Fields would do with DJ Moore because when he was in college, he could throw the ball when he had receivers like Olave in them. Yes. He could throw the ball. So I mean, he just hasn't had anybody to throw the ball to, like anybody. So I just I'm not don't know if we're be set better, back. Be. If yeah. we got him now, it's almost like those two years that were foundational. We just didn't have to deal with them. Yeah. But and you maybe also, you're getting a guy that could be stepping into a more but, polished. But you're right. You, is that, isn't I'm just your hoping, argument also? I'm just hoping. Don't right. we also agree that he's in a really bad coaching situation up there? So how are we assuming that they're fundamentally working? I don't know. I do, actually That's don't know point. enough to comment about how bad it is. It does seem like they've been tanking on purpose. Uh, they got the Eber Flues guy, which well, I, I believe, believe their offense is part of the right tree. The so we need to be a little cautious in saying how shitty the coaching is since Eber Flues came from Frank Reich's tree. Yeah, but the O line, yeah. the receivers. <laughs> like, all I bad, hope that's not the know? case. No, no, I understand. I no, I, I, get, I, I, I guess my get, whole point is just this about, is that the developmental years, we haven't, we, they happened potentially, but we didn't have to actually be the developmenters maybe we're getting him at a time where he's stepping into what he could be but you're right you're right there's nothing to bring that you're right i would rather have justin fields and bet on that than spend all the guaranteed money bringing lamar jackson i agree with that i would rather or what about this is what about this is that would you rather take will levis over justin fields it's people hard would for me say to, no. It's hard for right? me to. I mean, I, I, I don't I think know. There would I be some. It. Right, right, but like I think Justin. even this is like say the quarterback who is the bet pick your ideal quarterback here. If you guys have told me that Justin Fields was head and shoulders a better prospect coming out then, why? I, I, anyway, never mind. Let's go to the next <laughs> call. Two five two 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 eight fifty ninety eight. I would not be upset. With us rocking with Justin Fields, third year quarterback. Yeah. With Frank Wright. I'm down. I, give nine I would it. fuck with it. I would I'm fuck down. with that. You guys make fun of me for wanting to draft Will Levis. Don't make fun of me for this. I'm just not gonna, gonna, gonna trade the number nine draft. And Who go cares? get DeAndre. Go get DeAndre Hopkins. Yeah. 
Well, no, too expensive, man. We ain't got money. It's the growl that makes him howl, oh, a.k.a. Joey the Bottom Panther. I've been on hiatus from the cat calls last week because I was in Florida staying with some family and I didn't want them to hear how crazy I really was about the Panthers when I did my roar. <laughs> yeah, but uh, about he Frank didn't Wright, scare people with that I get why. I get why Frank Reich was hired. He did get screwed in Indianapolis. He checks all the pepper boxes. But he's not Steve Wilkes. I really wanted Steve Wilkes. I mean, I think Steve Wilkes, I mean, this plays right into uh, the lawsuit. And it's not even that, dude. Steve Wilkes deserved the job. But Frank Reich, what is he known for? Being good with quarterbacks. What did he not have in Indianapolis? A quarterback. And Cody, this is your day, buddy. This is your day because you know what? Your boy now has a coach who's known for getting a lot out of a quarterback. I mean, Carson Wentz. Let's go, baby. The bum of the century was MVP when Frank Reich was his offensive coordinator. So, and then he did fine in Indianapolis. I mean, Philip Rivers got to the playoffs, and he was old and on his way out. So, could you imagine what a rookie Matt Corral would be able to do, and like Frank Wright being able to basically, it's like getting a computer program. Like it, it's like building a computer from scratch. You get to do whatever. You get to make that thing do whatever you want. And that's what Frank Reich is going to have with Matt Corral. If that's the direction we go, which I think it is. Because why do you, if not, why don't you keep Steve Wilkes? And I know David Tepper is not that smart, but still. Uh, but I'll leave you with that. Anyway, guys. Wow, wow, wow. Can I ask the only thing about that comment he makes there is if if you think that Corral is good enough for Reich, does that mean and you were pulling for Wilkes? Doesn't that kind of kill your argument if you were thinking that Corral wasn't good enough, like Wilkes wasn't a good enough coach to coach Corral to be the quarterback, but we think that Frank Reich can, but you think that Steve Wilkes is a better coach? Those, those, it seems like you're kind of caught chopping down your own argument there. Does that make sense? No, I don't think you're chopping down the argument. I think you're actually just making the argument for right. Yeah. You know, I think people have like, yeah. that. I think that's been the whole thing is there's been no argument against Wilkes. There's just been a little bit more for somebody else. Or in this hey, case, I have like, right. four. I have four super chats that I have right. not read yet. Uh, White chocolate espresso with the four ninety nine. Get used to that name, Ooh. by the way. Uh, uh, AR skipping the bowl game is a bigger red flag. Wow. Uh, way over, way over senior bowl. Almost 90% skip the bowl game. Uh, and I guess don't draft them. Cody sucks ass. Thank you, son. What then it comes back says, Blah, had a pool hall. Fuck Peyton. So right. that's awesome. I love that. David Screws said, I'm looking forward to that no huddle offense. Appreciate you, David. Quick and tempo again, works in the NFL because they can't. So. White Chocolate Espresso says, drunk, 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 fuck Cody. Thank you. Thank you, Pretty son. Good. See, look, he's just trying to earn his way into the family. <laughs> um, mad at your father, not me. Oh, I forgive you. This is what I want to ask uh, as we go to the next question about Frank Wright. I've been very excited, very complimentary. I just thought he had a good, very good interview today with me as a person. Like, it's yeah. like, that's what I wanted to hear. It's fine. Uh, my two, so some people said that it was awkward at times, rattled. Uh, I think CK, you, I forget how you described it, but there was just moments that it could have been better. I cringy. think some people, right, cringy is the word you use. I want to, was the cringe this? Was it... Frank Wright dodging questions or is it just really at the end of the day, bad interview skills for us to ask two part questions. 
Because um, I feel like every question that was, let me we have a up, problem yeah. with his answer, it was just like, oh, why'd you ask? Now, you? Like, maybe he should have been taking notes, I guess. But I guess my, what I'm asking is this. Is it the problem with the way you ask the question or is he actually dodging the question? Because they asked him, like, what do you think about the quarterbacks on the roster? And he was just like, he didn't even answer. Forgot about that. One. Yeah, I didn't even <laughs> answer it. Well, the thing is, is it seemed like um, it was a almost a uh, you're going to get one opportunity to ask questions. So I'm going to get all the questions I sure. want to ask in as within this with this with this. This uh, is your you know, only chance, right? Um, so I, I don't blame them for asking two part questions. Um, the Charlotte vibe one was not a two part. I don't think it was. Uh, he might have said, "I have one question, but then I'm going to have a follow up, and then." He, he answered the first question and then the follow-up and then he, the follow -up. he actually he, asked that the best right yeah because yeah, you asked, asked one the, and then yeah. you get it yeah the, okay. it was just that frank Wright didn't you know at least quote unquote didn't understand him because it's his fault and not here's the part that i did like is that you did humanize him like ask my daughters i do this all the time if, if it's probably my fault if i'm not understanding what you're saying but i'm going to answer it to the best of my ability uh whether that's him not actually hearing it we, we can debate that it's, it's right again right. it's it's literally a nothing burger um whether he did or didn't um but uh but yeah I, I, it, it just felt awkward when he went into that and and one of the callers loved it when he went in and he was talking about how you know coaches have to be the 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 final say on all these things you know the the um the uh, the the players don't have a say in what happens and the, the i mean he was he, he was trying to be diplomatic but also straightforward and I can respect it, but I also felt like it was just a weird place to say that. And I think he could have probably uh, done some. You oh, know, totally kinda... his worst answer. Yeah, like it almost felt like, "Why? What are you talking about?" Yeah, that's how um, I was like. Is like it, what it did go on a bit of a about? rant. It, yeah, I mean, it was a bit like, of a rant. Wrong but I, topic. Yeah, um, but I mean, at the end of the day, I, again, I at the end of the day, like Matt Rule would say, um, you know, it's 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 so go to the tape. irrelevant to me. Like I just. Like I, at this point, like this is just a good to have the content, good to have the the conversation, good to have something else to talk about other than Matt Rule, right? Um, or even who we're going to be hiring. It's good to be able to move on from that. But you know, I, I just there's there's no nothing that I gathered from this that made me feel more or less confident in Steve or in uh, in uh, Frank Reich. Uh, yeah, as, as our I head think coach. that's completely fair. Uh, I guess the, the question was, I couldn't tell if it was just the two part questions that were problematic or if he avoided certain two part questions. <laughs> and uh, because he did not comment about the quarterbacks on the roster, he mm -hmm. avoided that. Is that a ditch? It is a dive. I don't know. I thought he had a decent press conference, but those are questions to ask about how we give interviews. Another thing. So uh, my, if, if they, had that impetus to ask two questions, which I do when Cody and I tomorrow, by the way, we've got uh, Jake Arthur coming on Indianapolis Colts beat writer to talk about Frank Reich's career in Indianapolis, 830 tomorrow. When Cody and I, we have to ping pong. Sometimes we both want them, you know, we, we want to, while we're thinking about stuff, I understand that. My advice to these reporters in that setting next time is stand up when you ask their your question. They were asking their question. They're like, oh, it's me over here on the left. Well, stand the fuck up. This poor guy's over there. There's 100 people over there. Stand up. Just don't wave your arms. Yeah. Stand up and ask your question. That would be my advice. My advice also is to play prize picks using the promo code C3. If you go to prize picks, the most fun daily fantasy fo football sports site you can do, Man, you'll have a great time. And you use the promo code C3. You get a 100% deposit bonus on your first time up to $100. And boy, even if they didn't sponsor this podcast, I'd still be playing it. I still would be playing it. I still am playing it. But I'm on like a 12 losing cooler right now. I am not going to lie. I can't get one right, folks. But thankfully, I've gotten a ton right before. So I'm still in big time plus money. But I need a big one, folks. And guess what? This is the week. Patrick Mahomes going into the Super Bowl is a free pick. We got to get the most of our money for this right now. Free square. We put in the 20 on this tonight, guys. Up to a $20, I believe, on these promotional things. We need one other in the Super Bowl. 
Look at this. You're getting what Patrick Mahomes would normally be 285 and a half. You're getting it for free. We need another pick. So do we go Jalen Hurts over less than? Do we go to the rushing Miles Sanders, do, 53 and a half? Do uh, touchdowns go up? Touchdowns. Passing? One point five for Jalen Hurts. Passing, passing. Yeah, that. Yeah, but that, that's three and a half for both of them, though, y'all. Look at that. Four touch. That means both of them throw for mm. two touchdowns. Ooh, like that one. And there's Boom. also the yards combined for those two. I think it was only like five hundred twenty-seven, which is only like two hundred. Do we like that? Look, do we too. like um, the combined here? I do. Or do we like an individual? I think the combined safer here. Mm. Like if if Mahomes goes off and throws four, you still win. Exactly. Yeah, I like three points. I like that one, Greg. Yeah, like, I, like that uh, one. I also like Jalen Hurts at uh one and a half. Um, oof, oof, five. These are some good numbers right here. Godert, you like Godert? He's kind of yeah, up and down. Like, he had a yeah. look. Oh, he's had the numbers, man. He's good. Yeah. Is yeah, this the battle of the tight ends? Godert, five catches. What's, Can what's it, it happen? Like? Hey, what about uh, Russian yards? Let's see what it is. Look at that one. Yo, where's, but, dude, I, I don't know if y'all know like this. But right. Isaiah Pacheco. That dude is a badass, man. That dude runs hard rookie, as hell. Right? He's, He's a fast rookie. as hell. Yeah, he was He's like a, a seventh round draft pick. Yeah, dude, the Chiefs yeah know be how careful. You don't know. They don't ever run the ball, the man. They never run the ball. They're almost like the Eagles. I don't like to bet on the, or not bet, to project the Eagles running back. Some, they always get rushing yards, but you never know who they're coming from. Yeah, right. it's just, yeah. Like, it's the running uh, back by committee there. And the, the and Jalen like? Hurts counts into that. Ooh, look at this. That's a good about, number right here. What about, this uh, is a what, fucking incredible number. What about uh, uh field goals no? made? Yeah, I'll say field goals made is always a fun one to look at too. Man, this has burnt me. I fucking hate this one. So each of them got to make two. Uh, I've got. Yeah. I got uh, on that. I ain't trying to fuck with it. How many? No, 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 see this. how many? Bar- no, go to, go to, go to, see how many buckers had. I do have. Have both made to the right, to the right, to the right. One, one and a half. Oh. Mm, I would do it, but that's just me. I know. Do you think Philly's defense can stop them enough to kick field goals? Yes. Basically, is 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 what that's going to boil down to? Dude, apparently Philadelphia they're doing some all time shit on defense. Well. We we went over that stat the other week, and I was talking about how they were second behind the Bears, and I was looking at that, and I had to go back and look at it further. Like, the Bears had 72, and they had 70 over the regular God. season. Yeah, the Bears played 14 games that season for regular season, I think, and the Eagles played 17. This so one's they had, scary. They had three more games to almost. You know what? I feel did. better about Miles Sanders over 63 that. That. than I do Godert over five catches. There's too many mouths too. to feed. That you don't know where it's going to happen, and you can then, get that in one play, sixty-three and a half. Yeah. Um, oof. Oh, what? Yeah. Come on, yeah, that's, so that's, that's golden right the there. Um, that's golden. Um, um, boom, we got it. Take it. This is our entry. Uh, Ooh. you know what? I think we only get a twenty-dollar max for that. That uh, is it twenty five? Yeah, we're doing it. Oh, I picked the same player twice. Oh, Oh, this one. Yeah, the double. Oh shit! No, go get your other one that you wanted. The uh, Sanders. Uh, Yeah, we've already got Sanders in it. Got him. Uh, don't like that. What's the interceptions look like? Ooh, that's a good one. Mahomes you already, got, won? You, already Patrick, you already got Patrick Mahomes. Oh, yeah, I can't do him. So. How about pass attempts? attempts? This is an under right here. This is a less than 10. Yeah. You think he's going to run more than 11 yeah. times? No, I don't. Okay. Well, that's why you're saying it's an under. Dude, okay, I got you. Okay. I would also yeah. do the passing touchdowns too, but. 
That's just me. For who? That was only we already did that. For Hertz. Where? He thinks Pass Hertz is going to throw for two yeah, touchdowns really. at least, and he may one and a half. What's the what he throw? I think for? He's going to throw two. What's better, Chat? Two. Uh, less than t- uh, that's a lot of rushes, bro. No, you're right. But they don't have to it be just... designed. So it could just be a scramble. That's a rush. Still a lot. Game one yard. How many? Rush. How many have uh, Hertz gotten? Ooh. That's what I'm saying. Wow, like, really? he Wait, he wait that's, passing touchdowns, touchdowns, that's passing touchdowns. He doesn't throw oh. a ton of touchdowns. Yeah. How do we get back to that? What was it? Rushing Go attempts? back to rushing attempts. Where the hell is it? Rush, 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 pass. Right, yeah. You lost it. It's not there anymore. Oh, that one's <laughs> close. That yeah, might not feel as good. Actually, yeah, I don't like I that. I told you, man. I, That's like rough. I would do the passing uh, touchdowns. Yeah, I think you're right. We're going with it. All right. We'll see what happens. I think it's going to be less on that. I'm going back to that Russian one later. I'm going. You know, I ain't going to place just one on that. Um, but yeah, hey, download Prize Picks today and play daily fantasy sports with us. Make sure you use the promo code C3 when you sign up. All first time users that deposit and use our C3 promo code receive a 100 per, uh, 100% instant deposit match. Up to one hundred dollars. If you deposit one hundred, Prize Picks will give you one hundred. If you deposit fifty, Prize Picks will give you fifty. That's PrizePicks.com. Promo code C three. If you want to help support us, support our sponsors, man. Hey, did you did you see it's Matt Corral's birthday? I damn sure did. Holy cow! <laughs> We're shouting them out right now. Thank you, brother. We get. We should. We got to be on top of this chat. You guys got to message me. One of the things I want to do is start putting out happy birthday shorts to like all do Panthers I players. Know that it's his birthday. Oh, Shit, Harry. What you got me? Co- Cody's the GM. Hey, by the way, yeah. look at that. By the way, I, I, I've, I've already got a hundred. I got hundred and seventy-six likes on this bad boy. That's real. That's real, bro. And Cody knows how to fucking work really? Twitter. Let's go to one more call. I think this is the last one of the night. And uh, unless somebody screams oh, at me for sorry. missing some, I'm not playing stuff from six. What's going years. on, family? D. Sanford, North Carolina. Yeah, dude. I was waiting for this. I had to chime in on this one. I'm highly optimistic, very highly optimistic, but cautious. I don't want to get my heart broken. I'm like that jaded girl that's done been in a bunch of bad relationships. And now here's something that looks really attractive and good. Don't know <laughs> if I can put all my heart into it, but I'm going to sit back and wait and have nothing but high optimism. I like the fact that they mentioned Foreman. It makes me feel the big old Deontay coming back. We get Bowles in the neck, gets Burns back. I think this is a sexy and attractive hire for us just off of the grounds that we have talent here. We have quite a bit of talent here. Frank Reich, he's got to be a good evaluator of talent. Like, come on, he's been on the Super Bowl Eagles team. He's played in this league. He's done a lot. Um, I just feel like at the end of the day, Frank Reich, at least for the press conference, the feel, the vibe, how everything went, that yeah, maybe we have found our dude to lead us to the promised land. Okay. I'm going to be continuing to pray for it. I'm also just so highly excited and interested to see what kind of moves that we're going to make in the all season, um, free agent wise, and also our draft strategy. But Sean Payton, we all knew the Saints really weren't going to do business with us. They knew that Sean Payton was not going to go against them twice a year. And we really didn't need to give up that compensation for him. So at the end of the day, I'm quite happy on the decision that they made. He found That's the call at night for me in some ways. I mean, he really hit a lot awesome. of points on the head. Yep. Um, and I guess maybe we should just talk briefly about um, Sean Payton going to the Denver Broncos, D'Amico Ryan. I mean, we kind of mentioned this earlier. And I think he's just right, is that is it was kind of silly. It would have been overboard for us, I think, to do it. And CK has been the voice of reason on this for weeks and weeks about the Sean Payton stuff, is that we w- we just were looking for a splash. And I think we we got a good 
car. It's like you're 16 years old and you want your parents to come home with a sports car, but they come home with a nice vehicle for you when you're 16 instead of something that's flashy on the outside and costs too much for you to maintain going forward. I don't know. I don't even, you know, it's, the weirdest part about the the Bronco shit, guys, is that they barely wanted Sean Payton. <laughs> That's the weird part about that. I love this yeah, the dude. way that this went down because it tells me that, well, let's, I mean, the part of it is is reasonable, right? Why give up another first round? I mean, they're already reeling from giving up so much for Russell Wilson. Why, why give up something for somebody that you, you know, that that's going to be free next year? Or go after a guy like D'Amico Ryan's, who's uh, who's highly sought after as well. Um, I just, uh, you know, I, I, I find that it's absolutely hysterical. It's like the opposite of what happened with us with Rule. Rule is the Broncos in this situation. Rule, you know, got our offer. He went to the Giants first to say, "Hey, listen, I'd like to try, but you're not interested." Yeah, we're gonna go with you, pick Carolina. You know, it was it's it's kind of the opposite, right? They let was, him hang out there. Yeah, mm-hmm. though, I do think this is the necessary move for the Broncos. I don't think they have the luxury of working with a coach who's unproven time and this. They already tried that this past year. They've leveraged all that shit for Russell Wilson. It needs to work. It needs to work now. If you're the Broncos, it can't work in three or four years. You can't come in here and say, oh, well, you're going to give this coach time to build around this. Right. Well, and so you're going to bring in a guy that you believe that or the expectations are there for him to win in, at any season and any moment and not that, oh, slow, slow, steady the course. That's my feeling there. But listen to this, because th- look at what all the Broncos went through to not hire Sean Payton. Like, it seemed like they were actively trying to get anyone other than Payton. So this is via Ian Rappaport. Unbelievable. The Broncos spent today trying to hire D'Amico Ryans again today before he recommitted to the Texans. When he agreed to terms with the Texans, they moved and finalized Sean Payton. So there's Ryans. They uh, secretly tried to lure Jim Harbaugh away from well, Michigan. Not secretly. No, we all hold watched on, it happen. Hold on. I mean, no, no, no. I mean, apparently after the whole Domenico oh, Ryan okay. thing. Okay, so they more. Got, they oh, okay. got on a plane. You. Yeah, they got on a plane okay. to Michigan. Hold on, but they, it's it's hilarious. They negotiated a Sean Payton deal and then tried to hire Domenico Ryan's Again, they tried to convince him to come away from the Texans and come back to the Denver Broncos. And when that didn't happen, only then did they finalize the hire of Peyton as their new head coach. Now, now he can do whatever he wants, though. Now dude, he's got in their my balls mind, in a fucking vice grip. Yeah, but dude, in my mind, after giving up the amount of trade capital that they did for Russell Wilson, they did not want to do it again for sure. And yet they had no choice. They had to. Yeah, they they put all their eggs in the basket of of these three coaches and the fact that uh that it was it was down to one left, they were kind of forced into this. And I love the fact that people are praising the Saints and 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 and, and their their uh their back office for getting them what they did for Sean Payton. I'm like Dude, like they did absolutely nothing. This was going to happen regardless of whether they were like they 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 just had to answer a phone call. Um, and honestly, the fact that uh, the 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 reported asking price for him was two first round draft picks, and they didn't get it. I don't understand why everybody's just jumping on this bandwagon of the Saints just did this incredible thing. They, they basically just took a first round draft pick. It is nice future. to get a first round draft pick for a guy that doesn't want to be your coach anymore. That's pretty cool. And when you didn't have one, right? You didn't uh, have they don't one. Have one. That's, that's have a 2024 one. one. As we're talking about trades, no, they had one. Kind of, no, they had one in 2023. They had a late yeah. round draft pick. They gave it. I, mean, I think they got it from somebody for no, Chubb. They, they got it from the Dolphins for Bradley yeah, Chubb. For Chubb. That's how they got it. 
because they shouldn't have any draft picks because of the Russell Wilson, but they got a uh, number one for Chubb. That's how but they, they didn't did trade this. a one for they traded. A yeah, they did. They Chubb. gave a one and a two for Sean Payton and a two. Yeah, they got a first round. Mm-hmm. They gave a I know first. They round. gave a first round, but I'm <clears throat> I'm I was it was I, next for my this year's first, next year's second, and <laughs> um, they get uh and the Broncos get Sean Payton and they get yeah yeah the number Saints next overall. year second yeah yeah I see it. um. Go into this. Can we shift real quickly to quarterback news throughout the NFL as we look at free agents? Well, we, we, we still had two more two more slides. I, I, just, I thought that was a slide that we were going to talk about with Derek Carr and now the trading. We were just talking about trading. I just want to bring this up, that Derek Carr has – I read a story on The Athletic today that said Derek Carr, they have not given him permission to seek a trade. So when you brought up Sean Payton, Sean Payton out there working for himself, he was on the beat. He was out there courting people. The Saints, like you said, just sit back there, sat back there and waited. The Raiders have not granted Derek Carr permission to seek a trade, but they have to trade him by February 15th, the new league year start. Or if he goes into free agency, they get fucked. They got to pay a ton of money. But this is what I read is that they don't want him working on his own trade deal because they're worried that his agent may be kind of saying, well, if we don't get the trade done, this is what we'll sign for in free agency. So they're worried that him out there lobbying for his so-called trade could screw them. He's going to get paid from the Raiders anyway, if he doesn't get traded. So they're trying to keep him away. That's all I was saying is that the Raiders right now have to get something for Derek Carr or they get screwed. They're going to get screwed financially anyway. They don't want – and they're worried about it. They need to get something. So he will come cheap. Cody, what's next? Oh, he's on mute. <laughs> um, no, oh, my bad. We don't have to spend too long. What a crazy topic. We don't have to spend too long on it. I think this even might have been prompted by my guy, John, uh, from One Carolina, Big John. Shout out to John. He was on the reaction stream earlier. And there was like a conversation, you know, after Hassan Reddick has been balling the fuck out in the playoffs, looking like a young Vaughn. You know, the. Better than cutting Brian out, folks. Burns. Yeah, he, cutting out. Bad he said yeah. this. He said he looking, Hassan Reddick's looking like a young Vaughn Miller. And now, Cody, you cut out. Tell us what you said after that. Yeah, and now people are questioning, is Brian Burns on the same kind of level as a Hassan Reddick? And uh, his brother, Hype Man Lucci, vehemently came to his defense on Twitter, man. He said, I'm good with fans having opinions about my brother. Uh, it's the nature of the business. But some assholes got to be put in place every now and then. Even though my brother will never address you, I will. And I don't give a damn where you want to take it. Keep pounding. I like it. Well, good big it. brother. Good big yeah. brother right there. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious to see. I would be very interested. I'd love for him to come on the show and just without a gotcha. It's not a gotcha segment. It's not a moment to be critical about Brian Burns or anything. It's just what were those assholes ultimately saying that really – prompted you in this moment to be you know what's the difference between the opinion and the asshole in that take i'm wondering what that was we talked a lot about brian burns going forward um as the importance of this team some people brought up this is that he was not at the press conference today Dude's but then i saw trained. other people say that he was in hawaii at the pro bowl yeah that's what i was going to say he's probably doing <laughs> so i don't know and nor do i really care um, I'm interested. What do you think? Why do you think he's this upset? Just that man. Why do you think that he? Because this is prompted. I, we, you guys all said good job right here. Older brother coming and doing this. But what do you think that take was that goes beyond someone's measured opinion? What was it? It can't just be that we should have kept Hassan Reddick because. Yeah, I that's mean, a dude, legitimate you know conversation. He had 17 and a half sacks this year. You can't be like, it's, oh, well, that's it's, stupid. Dude, it's social media, you man. Heard, yeah. You right. have heard the Friday free for all. Fans have some wild opinions, man. And they don't, they're do. not, they're do. not, they're not afraid of voicing them. 
Yeah. So okay. you know, just curious a lot of what people it was. Wanted, a lot of people wanted to trade Brian Burns next year. Interesting so, stuff. Well, you next? were getting the offers for him. I mean, I can understand why yeah. people felt that way, but I mean, it's hard mm-hmm. to it's hard to argue. I mean, I know it's you know when you know Tony, you've had a, a you know maybe differing opinion on this, but uh, when you look at the the numbers he's put up, he's put up better numbers than anybody in our franchise in the past seven or eight years. True, true. You know, uh, I've been dropping, and I'm trying to stick with this. Hopefully, I will keep my momentum. Uh, on YouTube, we're getting in the shorts game a little bit. If you guys can thumbs up when you see some stuff and really just inform me if you like the content or not, like, I mean, in a nice way is like, do you want something different? What are some ideas we can continue to yeah. deliver this diverse content? But what I've been trying to do is half of it has been stealing from this little desk calendar. Don't tell them because they'll probably try to charge me. And I've just been trying to make a daily uh, trivia question. And a little short that's just fun. Today's on February 1st, or yesterday, actually, yesterday's because it just turned February 1st. 131 was uh, who was the leading sack, who was the sack leader for the 2020 Panthers with nine sacks? It was Brian Burns. Right. So you're right, is that he has been the guy consistently. Yeah. It's just uh, that last year it was Reddick. So you couldn't ask that question last year. But at the same time, it was only nine. Well, I mean, he's even, been good. He's been a very good you know, What I mean and what my, my point is, is that... Can we it, put the shack up and I continue, CK? I would, I would say that as a collect... Like, I, what I mean is over his first four years, there, even if you go back eight years, right? Like... Shaq Thompson, or not Shaq Thompson, Brian Burns who it would have been. potentially has one of the best stat lines, even going back eight years. Uh, we were good for, in 2017, right? I'm for total, total stats. That, that's my my whole point is is he's, what, 9, 18, 27 plus, what do you have this this year? 13, 14, 15 He had his stats? best year this year. He had his best you know, year this year. Um, <clears throat> you know, so he's he's already in four years averaging over 10 yards per, per year, even though you know, it was nine, the first three. Okay. Um, now he's been very, he's, he's important to our defense. He's been very consistent. And this is how I would argue it is like you're saying is I've been critical a little bit or maybe whelmed at times by Brian Burns as just a superstar. I think he's kind of a star. I don't think he's a guy that across the league, if you weren't a Panthers fan, you would be like, Oh, Brian Burns is the dude. You know, maybe some people would that saw him in the division. But the uh, I do think this is that today somebody brought this up on Twitter, and I hope we have the slide. I threw it in there, and that was about Shaq Thompson and the necessity of him renegotiating his contract. I think it was in response to that David Newton tweet. But the thing that I thought was, and I wasn't trying to be combative, combative I want to ask you guys this. Somebody said, look, Shaq, and this is actually the real question about Shaq is that we have had such great linebackers in our history, and we have been certainly spoiled. I mean, from actually, we've been spoiled from Dan Morgan all the way to Luke Keekley's exodus in so many ways. And sometimes people say we hold that against Shaq. So he says, like, hey, he's better. And he said he's better than people get it credit for. He's not just, he called him a Jag, just another guy. But I think there's a little legitimate conversation to ask. Is Shaq really better than average or is he kind of just of another guy? Mm. And I'm not trying to be mean about it, but I think this, I think Brian Burns has been more of a star in his time as a Carolina Panther than Shaq Thompson has. A hundred percent. Yeah, I agree. But here's the other part that I'll say with regard, I mean, to, to Shaq Thompson's credit, He's made it through three, you know, potentially three coaching regimes, yeah. multiple defensive coordinators. He's got his first contract. He could have big been, one. He could have easily been gone, right? So the dude's doing something behind the scenes to keep himself yeah. super relevant. Right. Um, right. And uh, and and so I, I, it's hard to say because we don't see a lot of this, and it's similar to maybe his his role on that uh, defense is similar to. You know, an offensive line, right? You know, a lot of times, if you don't hear their name called, it's a good thing. Um, and and so maybe that's what we're seeing with Shaq. We're not seeing him getting beat all the time. We're not seeing him like not 
tackle people efficiently. We're just not seeing him make those plays consistently. We're not seeing him get the interceptions. We're not seeing him forcing the fumbles. We're not seeing him he's getting pretty back. good, but he is, he is, he's, I think he's got <laughs> really good fundamentals. I just don't know that he's, he's a, he's, he's, I would say he's above average. I would agree with that. I think he's above okay. average, but I don't think, think is, I don't think he's at, at a it's star not much. Level. It's not much above average. That's what I would put. Um, here, tell me if we heard this call. I do want to, I've missed a couple calls in the past and this was from, I think two days ago. Oh, guys, UFC 3 is JJ. Um, I kind of wanted to, I guess, reemphasize this. Um, cause I mean, like, I'm sure we're going to talk about the draft a lot now that we have our coach with Frank Wright, but Cody mentioned in the last podcast, he didn't want to miss out on premium talent by drafting a quarterback. And, uh, that that's cool. That's amazing, you know, because there's a risk at, at quarterback uh, because you want to depend so much on the quarterback position. If you miss it, it's a big loss and a big waste of a pick. But, granted, it's like that with every position, not just quarterback. You know, every pick is a gamble. He mentioned that. But I just want to go back two years ago when that was the plan. You know, we passed up on – Justin Fields, because we had traded for Sam Darnold, we went after the premium talent. And then, sure enough, like we drafted, we drafted JC Horn, and he, he's a premium talent that plays 40% of games and wasn't even the best at his position. You know, Shirtan, who's on Pro Bowl, the first team all pro. We we missed out on Michael Carter. JC Horn's better than Shirtan. And yeah. And then we missed out on a possible franchise quarterback in Justin Fields. So that whole let's go after premium talent, it could still blow up in our face Good. even worse than swinging and missing on a quarterback. Because at least you took an emphasis at going after our biggest hole. And I feel like once you emphasize and address that, it's a lot easier to build a team after that. But you've heard me say that a million times. I'm sure you guys get tired of it. Um, love the show. Love everyone Y'all there. Both can be uh, right. Sorry I missed the Friday free for all. Use code C3. Uh, on that. Prize Prize Space. Space. You all know man. that. This stuff. Keep on. That's a radio pro right there. <laughs> He's a podcast pro. We got him dropping the. Uh, both can be right. What What do you mean, both can be right? Um, that or both can be both actually you both can be right right he can be right and y'all can be right uh i agree 100 about y'all and jc and sir tan it is unfortunate that jc has not played as the you know been healthy the whole time that is unfortunate but i think in the sample set we've seen we feel better ahead that like i'd still probably make that pick and just hope that jc didn't have the injury history sure but I think yeah. where he can also be right is this, is that don't deflect and use sleight of hand of a, of a pretty good, of a pretty good player. Cause he hasn't been healthy. You know, he's not like a hall of famer all of a sudden. He's not a pro bowler all of a sudden with don't use that as sleight of hand as we shouldn't have taken a quarterback. But like, is that if you would have hit or even come close to hitting on a quarterback instead of JC Horn, the team would be significantly better at this point. Imagine if this, if you had Justin Fields right now and you were picking at nine. Right. Are you in a better spot today if you are the Carolina Panthers with the exact same team? And I know that's a, a, a trivial example because the team would not be the same. That's a good but question. I've, I've, yeah. I've continued to say this, though, is that, yeah, you can pick those players and they do impact your team in the long run. But until you get that quarterback, who gives a fuck if you got the best roster, the Cleveland Browns? Who gives a fuck who the best safety is? Now, maybe a tackle, maybe an end. I will. I'll listen to you, but it's the QB, bro. I agree, Until but I, you I get also, that it don't matter. I think that there's also a part of this that I think is worth at least expressing, and that is this could have worked out the best possible way ever, right? Like if we get a guy that is the quarterback, and we've drafted in the past four drafts. Uh, J.C. Horn, Derek Brown, um, you know, uh, Iki Iquanu, right? We've, we've went with talent, and now we put that quarterback in that role. 
we're all of a sudden and don't don't but think you gotta I'm get comparing them. the two. No, but, but you got to get him, and that's what he's kind of saying. Right. You it's like if we them, just do that but, again and punt on the quarterback, oh, yeah, you never. 100%. Yeah, th- this, th- you've got you've got to take the shot. You can't continue to recycle these quarterbacks. You've got to move on to a guy you think is the future of this team, and it can't be – you can't continue to just go out and try – like all of a sudden we're going to start to be the, the, the place that quarterbacks go to die, right? This At is, some point, that's what we're going to be. This is exactly why, though, I think Frank Reich is going to be an excellent fit here because of his experience in Indy with going through four quarterbacks. He said the key is just is we need stability. Now, we've heard that from our previous coaches. We heard that from Matt Rule, this and that. But the thing with Matt Rule and that previous regime is they went out and did the right thing. They went out and and be, be careful. I don't want to go too far and say that, but – they said, look, we're going to get a quarter, a bridge quarterback and then bring in, and then try to get the guy. But they never went and get, got the guy. And Indy did the same fucking thing. They went bridge, bridge, bridge and never got the guy in the background. So what I think we know now is this, is that the Panthers are going to go bridge no matter what. If that, that could be fucking Aaron Rodgers. It could be Derek Carr. It could be Matt Corral. I don't think Matt Corral counts for that. But they're still going to say this. We can't just sit with that and expect it. I think they do that and draft mm. a QB. You know what I'm saying? It's like I think yeah, that's the lesson they've learned is this, is that that works for next year. But where the fuck are we the year after that? The, the we argument, need to be ready. The, the argument I would have is they are going to do that, but they are not going to be going and trading assets away to try to make that happen. I think that's fine. Okay, I know. I you agree know. with you. I, I like I like letting it come to you at nine. Yeah. Well, I mean, that, that's, that's what I mean is like what, what I, for the, for the bridge. So for instance, car right now would cost assets. Even if it's a third round pick, it's costing assets, right? They're Maybe not going to be fifth, going and doing who that. Who cares about that? Um, and then you're going to have to pay him on top of that. Right. But you're he's not, getting a shit ton of money from the Raiders. So you don't have to pay him. Like have straight to pay up. him. You're still gonna he's going to want money. Yeah. Um, and, and then you're going to, then you go about Aaron Rodgers. They're going to require an amazing draft capital or go he's, after. Yeah, he's trying to win next right. year. I don't think right. that fits us. So Why even is, if you who's think a better Jimmy option Garoppolo. than Carr? I guess who's even a better if you go Jimmy than Garoppolo, Garoppolo, he's still under contract. Didn't he sign an extension? He's still technically mm. going to need to be traded for by for, to the forty from the forty nine. He just did a one year deal. I might no, be I'm wrong. pretty sure he did an extension. If I'm not remember, mistaken. he came <laughs> back after Trey Lance got hurt. Yeah. Can, can I ask? Or he was on the sidelines. They tried to trade him. Maybe on. You're. I don't know. I don't know what the details are. My question to you though is: is that look, Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, those guys are ridiculously old. You could talk shit about them. You could say you're going to win with them, but we're not the team for them. Right. Right. I mean, it's just not the case. Is that the Carolina Panthers are not the team that? Yeah, you might make the playoffs because you have a shitty division, but you can't really realistically believe you are Super Bowl bound and you're just quarterback away. If you look at the Carolina Panthers and say that, you're fucking an idiot. So I think this is where is that that, that quarterback has to be kind of in that Sam Darnold, Geno Smith, um, Derek Carr type range, or you risk it for the biscuit with Matt Corral and a rookie. And I don't even know if you want to do that. Why do you want to be an asshole to a rookie like that? Even if you get Will Levis or CJ Stroud at seven, uh, what has everybody told us? We don't. They won't need to throw them wolves to the fire right away. But why not? That's what the, that's what they trained for is to come to be an NFL quarterback. Right, I mean, I, right. I don't how understand. Many te- how many I don't of you guys get killed? I don't understand this desire to say that you Fat have Mons, to have a quarterback, quarterback sit for it, a year. I I just don't get. You don't it. have to. That's what I'm saying. Like, like you definitely have to. Here's my question though: Is Frank Reich is this quarterback whisperer, right? So if we're talking about Frank Reich bringing in a bridge quarterback and drafting a quarterback, does that mean everybody's just totally out on Corral? Like he's done? Like no, because well, because if Frank Reich's a quarterback whisperer and he does that, that means Frank Reich's out on Corral too. That he doesn't like what he sees there either. Well, he also he also talked about how much he coveted competition yeah. Great during point. his press conference. Even if they do draft a quarterback, like. Will Levis or Anthony Richardson, I I tell you what, I fully expect Matt Corral to be a part of a bigger competition this year than whatever the fuck he was a part of with Matt Rule last year. We should probably look for any trinket or tidbit of nugget of information 
as we go forward in the next seven months, regardless of who we draft, as long as Matt Corral remains on this roster, we should mm-hmm. be looking for stories that say, oh, Matt Corral and Frank Wright went on playing golf together today. They've become, <laughs> you know, we need to look for anything. And that's what mm-hmm. Matt Corral, he has the advantage right now of being on the roster. Right. So, like, he could say, I mean, hopefully he could just say this is, look, I ain't done shit in the NFL, but I'm here ready to work. I've been here. I'm hurt. Right. I know that, but I'm trying to get better. He don't, like, draft whoever you want to draft. Bring in who you ever want. But he has the advantage of getting the playbook early. Not even, not even just that. He is the starting quarterback right now. Right. Yeah, as we speak. But right. aren't we going to feel bad if we drafted – a quarterback at nine. If we signed a player like Carr, and then we just don't go with Corral anyway. Well, yeah. Like, yes! that's, the that's by like, the way, this that's has the been death what blow I've been for him. Yelling. I'm sorry, that's the death blow for this him. This is what it's I've been gonna, yelling at the happens, top of my lungs. Matt Corral is not a. That's what I'm if, saying. If, if we, we bring if in we, a veteran and draft one, there's no way Corral is is the guy. There's no. But way. guess what? I'm not going to change my whole strategy just because I'm worried about Cody not being right. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, it kind of sucks. It does. That would kind of suck. And it is the unfortunate part of the world. But if that happens, don't expect Matt Corral to get a real. You know what I'm saying? Like if you bring in Derek Carr and then you draft a quarterback, it's pretty simple. Those are the guys and Matt Corral. Sorry, bro. You might even just be cut. He might not even get traded. Yeah. He might just get cut. He might not anyway, even get traded. If I'm Matt Corral, I, I come I come if I'm Matt Corral, I come showing out, letting everybody know. Yeah, I'm the fucking shit. Yeah, and I don't give a shit if you like it or not. I'm about to show everybody. Well, he has to do that. I ain't gonna take no for an answer. He does. Um, Kirk Cousins. Look, Kirk Cousins, third round pick, or no, no, he might have been later than that actually. But him and R. R. They drafted R. G. Three. Think about what they did, and I know it sound. It probably looked insane at that moment. Imagine if you were a Redskins fan. And you had the number two overall pick. You picked RG three, and then you got to the fourth round pick, and then you picked another fucking quarterback. That would have driven me fucking up the wall. Not if you didn't and have then, a backup. And then, well, and then Cousins though ends up having the career. Yeah, I mean the total irony of it. But if we drafted, how about this? If we drafted a quarterback at nine next year, and then we picked a quarterback even in the sixth round, I'd be pissed. I'd be like, get the fuck out of here, bro. Yeah. Get I, the I fuck agree out. if we did it because we we have a backup. At I the feel very like least that's in similar, Corral. though. The number mm-hmm. two overall pick. Imagine if you were the Texans this year and you drafted Bryce Young and then you picked, uh, I don't know, Holt Nailers from ECU. Um, well, the, the difference here is they have, they have uh, you know, Davis Mills, who's got game time experience as a backup. Like, we if they have a backup, then you know you don't need to. But if they don't have a backup, why not? You know, go especially if that's somebody you saw as a potential. You know, for for filling a role that you need. I mean, I don't see any problem with that. We we draft people all the time in the fifth round just to be backups for us. Yeah, I mean, I'm sorry, man. I don't want to do that at the quarterback situation anymore. I'm tired. I'm tired of it. Actually, I don't know. I actually, I'm very interested in that. We'll continue to monitor that. But you're right, Greg. You're asking the right question about Matt Corral. Mm-hmm. Is that Cody has a lot of good reasons to take the position that he does about Matt Corral being the pick that they made last year? Like mm-hmm. he was a re- there was a reason he was that pick that they traded up for him, and there was also a reason that he fell because he missed the bowl game because of an injury. There are also concerns about him going forward, but if you bring in a veteran and you also draft a quarterback early anywhere, I mean, it's just like, I mean, it's just sorry. I mean, it's just the unfortunate part of the game. And also unfortunate part of the game is Steve Wilkes was really, really good for this team. Uh I mean, he did um, a Herc. I mean, it was kind of a Herculean task. And they asked David Tepper when he when he fired Matt Rule if uh, what Steve Wilkes would have to do to get the job, and he said he had. I mean, he would. He's going to look at him, but it's got to be fucking phenomenal. And it was one or two games short of phenomenal. Steve Wilkes did not get the job while Frank Wright was hired, but D'Amico Ryan's is now. It looks like heading to 
Houston, which opens up. 49. Very, yeah, very interesting defensive coordinating position at the 49ers. I believe they were courting uh, Vic Fangio, but uh, he has signed with the Miami Dolphins, which I think that's great. I'm, I'm all on the Dolphins a lot of ways. I think Aaron Rodgers should go there. But the 49ers uh, are going to be, it looks like, interviewing Steve Wilkes. If the Panthers, imagine if the Panthers denied this request. The, as request, 49ers request interview with Steve Wilkes because he's technically still under contract. So he will be um, interviewing with the 49ers. What a great gig that would be. Dude, I would this love actually that might keep him relevant for a head coach in the future. Which is what right. I'm saying. Like, that's he would. I am telling you, like, everybody wants to shit on David Tepper for not hiring him. David Tepper gave him a fucking golden opportunity by being the interim head coach here. And Steve Wilkes took advantage of that and he did, he did. everything he could. And now he is Close. looking, being looked at to be the coach of the defense for one of the greatest defensive uh, teams in the entire like NFL. Most talented. Yeah. One totally of the most, most talented. talented. So, I mean, right now, to be, I know everybody is like, I mean, not, not everybody. There is a large contingent. Job of people that are just really upset that that Steve Wilkes didn't get this position. Steve Wilkes is coming out on top. Well, I mean, I wouldn't say, I mean, if he would have been the head coach of the Carolina Panthers, he certainly would have come more out on top, but I am rooting for him to get, well, I mean, you know what? A head coach is a head coaching position. You just got to take it when you get it. I mean, it's the real deal. It is the premium coaching position on the team. Like, so, any head coaching be- position is technically better than an offensive coordinator position, unless they were just paying you more. Right. Then I guess we got to talk money. But in title and prestige, being the head coach is better than being a coordinator. Mm-hmm. But I tell you this, is that if you're not going to be the head coach of a bad team, hey, what would be awesome to be an assistant co- a coach, at a coordinator of a very good team? <laughs> You know, so if you're going to land, I feel like he's landing on his feet here. Yeah, I agree. And I'm rooting for this. I want this to be the D. I want him to get this job. I will be interested in watching how he executes as defensive coordinator. We don't have a terribly large sample set of him being the defensive coordinator. He did it for us for one year. Then he went to Arizona and was the head, uh, head coach. And then I think he took on. I don't think he was a uh, coordinator for the Browns. I think he was then assistants, and then he came to us as a DB's coach the second time. Yeah. And his time here in Carolina was, you know what? He did pretty good with a mixed lot, but he had to blitz. Like, we could not get any mm-hmm. pressure. You remember he just blitzed and blitzed and blitzed and blitzed. So, I remember it was uh, very um, – it was – like we had a good defense, but it wasn't great. And he so manufactured it. Yeah, it was. It was an interesting. Uh, it was an interesting because I remember that year we were like we weren't like a great defense, and he got hired as that head coach. And I think many of us were a bit surprised when he got the the, the head coach nod after one year of defensive coordinator for the Panthers. I agree. I agree. So. Um... Uh, good stuff. Uh, I don't know if Cody left. L- left here. Let me just no, try to here. let here. me check this one call. Let's see. I don't want to skip this guy. One guy. I've been skipping one person by accident. My thoughts on the Panthers podcast today. I think that coach was talking directly to Anthony Richardson with the RPOs, mm. uh, getting out of the pocket, being able to teach him how He's not to wrong. Uh, read the field, make those throws. I definitely think he was talking to uh, Anthony Rich. I believe we're going to draft him at the ninth pick. And uh, I believe after that, we're going to – I think he's going to beef up the defense a little bit more than we expected. That's my take on what he was saying. Uh, he did a good job in, in my eyes. And uh, I, I like the fact that he was uh, overly hyped about getting started and the fact that he was around Sam and he knows what it means to keep pounding. That's a little bit. Well, I'm going to leave that there. But uh, talk to you guys later.
<laughs> All right, man. Thank you for the call. Um, you know, I, I, here, I think with AR-15, like you guys, a lot of people in the chat, not in this chat, but yeah, they're probably in this chat right now. Anytime I'm kind of, I like, I just like pick these people and I'm not super attached to them, but I like the Levis stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know people say he sucks and that's terrible. And people, anytime I mention Levis, this is kind of like my theory. And it's just a fan theory with very little tape and research, just a highlight video here and there. Is I like, oh, what if we had Carr and drafted Levis and then Levis is the next guy? Like, I could actually see that potentially working. And then people run me out of the building for that shit. They run me out of the building for that. Mm-hmm. AR-15 at nine is rich. I think that's rich. And I almost feel like this is there, or I'm going to ask you, Cody, because you are the draft. Is there a possibility that Levis, I know he is a guaranteed top 10 pick, but like say something weird happened. Could he fall to the second? And really, is AR-15 very good, but should he be a second round There's pick? There's only somebody. I, know, feel, gonna I feel it's very possible that both of them could end up being second round picks. See? Oh, I you know, especially if people, Especially if people continue to sour on Will Levis for reasons we spoke about before. Um, another thing internet. about Anthony Richardson, well, another thing about Anthony Richardson is he's only been a starter for one year. And a lot of the, that's, that's a red flag to a lot of people. Normally, I mean, ideally you would want your quarterback to be a three year starter. Obviously that's not going to be everyone, but yeah, only one season as a starter for the Florida Gators, uh, in my opinion, they both represent a lot of physical upside. But, yeah, you just don't know if you're getting a finished product or not and how long it'll take to develop them. So, yeah, I could see them falling in the draft. How um, far, I don't know. I want to just – hopefully I can find it super quick. There, is, Oh, this. This is it. All right. So I hope that Anthony Richardson – I have nothing against him or for him. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't have a dog in the fight in this. Um, But it just seems like this is people love to dog on Levis. And then all of a sudden, um, Richardson could be this diamond in the rough, which is fine. Maybe it's the case. But this is, is this like right here, this video, people trying to whatever. This video has been floating around right now. And they're like, oh, my God, look at his arm strength. That's what the, the okay. I mean, he might do, but like, is this? Vi- I mean, like, look, this is a very good throw. But I mean, are you just look? I mean, yeah, oh, well, dude. Not- no, but here, this I mean, is the tweet. It is floating. No, this tweet was going around. Oh, where did it go? They were going on. They're like, look at this bazooka, and I was like, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, he might have a great arm. But is that tr- truly? It's, well, I'll, I'll find it in just a second. But you know, I hope he is. I hope he. Uh, I hope he's fantastic. How big is I he? I think we just want things to happen. That's it's it. Four. Okay. So um, uh, honestly, it kind of sounds like he's. I, I hate to say it, it kind of sounds like he's kind of a Cam Newton S type player. Oh, good that's where a lot RPO, of people compare him to. Run the ball well, big guy, but doesn't has a cannon, but doesn't necessarily throw the ball great. It sounds like a Cam Newton. Right. That's actually what a lot of people compare him that's to. That's a very big yeah. – yeah, that's a that's a comparison that um, Which, is pretty accurate. Outside of the success of Cam Newton, Cam Newton was one of the greatest college football players right. in the entire history of this college football. Yeah. Um, and so, I think it's a compliment to AR-15 and maybe a little slight to Cam Newton. Yeah. I think they're. I, mean, I think they're true. talking it's about traits. Comp. Like it's, yeah, it, yeah. it's, it's all traits and not. You can't really, like, I, I don't know if you can compare the two in any other way other than physicality, and that's about it. Okay. Well, footwork. You know, the footwork kind of at from time that to time be part of the physicality. It, uh, what technique? You know, physicality. I define as your ability to do things physical you know running and jumping and that kind of stuff which it does compare to cam but a lot of the technical motherfuckers over like cam was 
Maybe. Clearly, yeah. you haven't seen Anthony Richardson a lot. Or else like that, like Cam's level of bowling yeah. people ever? Okay. I mean, that's a big deal. I mean, I'm in. I'm in. If very, it's comparable to Cam in any way, I'm in. They're Let's draft very, him at very, nine, then. Um, I think that's all I got. I think uh, we've talked enough about Frank Wright's, uh, the kind of things I, I thought were interesting about him. I do think it's very important to think. I don't think his ego is going to be an issue. And I think working with Scott Fitterer and him, I think that it's going to be an easy relationship, which, and I think Scott Fitterer is coming from one that was probably more difficult. So for him, he's like, I got this, bro. And Fitterer is probably saying the same thing. I was like, he's like, I was dealing with fucking Matt Rule before. <laughs> so I'm ready. So these guys seem to relax. Um, we'll look for some of the things that we talked about. We've argued a ton tonight. We talked about, uh, Really, the Brandon NFL arguing. news already. You know, we've talked about that. We talked about Brian Burns. Did we miss anything on y'all's hearts about the Carolina Panthers? And then let's go to these ice up picks. I don't think so, man. It's been an eventful day. I'm tired. I'm happy that the search is over. Yeah, you were big. Yeah, that we get to move on and that now we know kind of the direction that we're moving in. And um yeah. Yeah, man. I'm mark it this. Mark I this need. down. Mark this down. If Frank Wright wins the games that you guys said he should win, right? Somebody said 10 wins on the call. If he wins 10 wins, go ahead and write this down. David Tepper is going to be working for that new stadium. First 10 win season that happens, I promise you, new stadium talks will happen. That's all I got to say. Yeah. Uh, can we go to these ice up picks, guys? Let's do it. Ice up, son. Ice up. Uh, the ice up uh, segment is the longest running segment on the longest running Panthers podcast. There is a great storyline that has been surrounding the Carolina Panthers new hire and Frank Wright being the first Co- I mean, the first quarterback to throw a touchdown pass for the Carolina Panthers. And now he's coming back around. And guess what always comes back around in every episode of the C3 Panthers podcast? That is the Ice Up Picks. It's our homage to Steve Smith, where we tell someone to ice up, toughen up, to get it together. Everybody is fair game. Who is ready to go to the mattresses? Yeah, I'll go first just because I don't have a big one. I normally have a funny clip or whatever. Today, I don't. Um, some of you are familiar with Mr. Beast on YouTube. Oh, yep. He, he does lives in Greenville, North really, Carolina, really by the way. Bullshit. Yeah, North Carolina guy. My but town. He lives recently, in my town. He put out a video just recently of curing a thousand people's blindness because half of the blind people in the world all it takes is a 10-minute surgery, and you can literally correct their blindness. The problem is wow. most here in America don't have access to that kind of health care to, to be able to afford that kind of procedure, even though they might need it. So uh, Mr. Beast makes a video where he literally pays for a 1,000 people to have his eyes to have their eyes repaired and it was incredible it was a great thing for him wow. to do but the internet of course is bitching at him they're whining and moaning saying that the only reason that Mr. Beast even did this was because he can use it to profit and monetize for views and put them on YouTube and and you know basically use these people to you know make himself richer and my thing is this, it wasn't getting done any other way. So how the fuck are you going to blame this guy for doing something that the healthcare systems have been failing to do forever? I mean, this man is living and people want to find something to bitch about. Dude, the people, the internet is like a cancer. People have grown accustomed to finding the negative aspects of everything in the world. That's why you just have to say, fuck them. 
applause to Mr. Beast for doing the right thing and to all the pitiful idiots that are shitting on him. Dude, I up, son. There I is... I, I Yeah, I agree 100%. Because, number one, there is no such thing as selfless acts. I am telling you with certainty, every act that we do... It it's if it's not intended for what like for praise from somebody else, it's meant to make you feel good. That is not selfless, right? That means you're doing it because you want to feel like you're a good person. That's there's acts right there, right? So number one, no matter anything we do in life, we do it for a reason to benefit ourselves, right? It's it doesn't remove the fact that you're helping people that are actually in need. Um, number two is. Mr. Beast can make money, that exact same amount of money, doing any fucking video he wants. So you're acting like him doing that video, like he could have not done that and made the exact same amount of money on a different video that had nothing to do with helping a thousand people right. again. He could have right. done the exact same thing. So absolutely, anybody who's acting like Mr. Beast is, a, uh, is just trying to profit off of people's um, you know, inability to get these surgeries, like it's absolutely hysterical. It's just even hysterical. if he is trying to profit, thank God you're profiting in a positive way. Mm. I think this is that people's um concern. Like you said, the internet was a cancer, Cody, and this kind of thing is I just think that it's misdirected and the the outrage is just slightly off. Mm -hmm. Like we're aiming down a target and we know something's down there. But we're a little off, and Mr. Beast isn't the target to hit in this one, right? The The other thing is this, is that if you want to be critical in that way, why aren't we all giving $5? If we all just give $5 tonight, we could cure a million people. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So why, why, don't, why don't we do it? And I don't say us on this podcast, but like, it's like we can't talk shit and then not do shit. Right. That's the thing. And the other thing is that Ultimately, is that, that doesn't that just show that like our our ideals about like where money goes and medicine? Maybe we just have misdirected our motives. That's not Mr. Beast's deal. And and aren't the people who are commenting on this doing the exact same thing they're complaining about? They're com commenting on a social media platform on, attached to a huge person who gets a lot of stats just so people can see them. Right, and right. Go, and like, attract the attention. Thing attract about. attention. Yeah. They're actually worse because they actually didn't do anything good for somebody. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. They're they're out here <laughs> making videos to try to make right. money off of YouTube Profit. so that they can just you know be be a YouTube famous. No other reason than a completely self uh, selfish act, and that is to do things that's going to just benefit you and nobody else. Yeah, agree, agree. Ice up to those motherfuckers. Uh, Mr. Beast lives in Greenville, North Carolina, my town right now. He just started a partnership with East Carolina University, by the way, Cody. I know you love to shit on my little school that's bigger than Clemson and enrollment. Podunk. But uh, he actually just started a program for creators to go and get a certificate at the oh, university. For YouTube creators? Yeah, like, or, yeah, like for any creators like oh, dude that guy's awesome i have no problem with from my Beast. town dude he instead of awesome. this is a great thing you know what I'm, I'm not gonna say where i teach at or where i'm affiliated at because i try to separate some of these things but he told his mom gave him an ultimatum when he graduated high school she said you either got to go get a job or you got to go to co the community co like go to college and so he fake went to college yeah and he went and made videos all day instead in his car uh Fake wow. went to the school I teach at. How about that? <laughs> He's a nice. fake alumni. <laughs> um, can I go real quick? Yeah. All right. Yeah, uh, my ice up picks. I know you guys have been mad at me all night for overdoing stuff, and I'm going to keep you mad. Uh, real quick is I don't know if this one's real. I don't trust anything on the Internet. And since it's a screenshot, I don't know if I can really trust it. So I haven't been able to verify this story. But uh, this made me laugh is Arlisha Boykins, a 22-year-old former assistant coach on the Churchland JV girls basketball team, impersonated a 13-year-old player uh, and went and played in this uh, middle school or high school game. Oh, <laughs> yeah, so I like that is I don't know if it's true or not, but... 
when I was a young kid, there was this big story about this Puerto Rican kid that they didn't have a birth certificate and he won the World Series, the like uh, the Little League World Series, and he turned out like he was like 17. And they like, oh, so no. I'm always intrigued by those stories. This one, I don't know if you guys uh, have seen this, but this is more, you know, I like those cringe People oh, I've seen this. this. I saw this the other day. So, actually, this is not special to me. Other than this, is somebody put out justified or attempted murder. And I don't even think that's a legitimate conversation. I think it's just justified. This jackass, actually, I should say, this individual is talking junk. I don't know if he, can you guys hear that? No. No, no. Watch. Oh my god. Oh, hey, hey, hey. What the Watch friend. this. Watch this is uh so this guy come and sw- comes and swings at this Taco Bell employee. The b- employee slams him down. Look, his friend drug him over. He's dead. Or in he's oh. intensive but care there's, or something. No, he's not, like, there, there's blood on the floor. I don't know if it's yeah. dead. I think what? he went to intensive care. But then his buddy gets mad. He's like, what'd you do? He's like, dude, I just fucking fended myself off. I mean, yeah, he rushed. Look him. at that, his that point I know. And then the guy where, yeah, so that one is that uh, fuck around, find out is kind of the rule that people are talking about. And this one makes me laugh. My last one, trophy hunter eaten alive by brother of the lion he shot and killed for an Instagram post. Yeah, I saw that. (laughs) So this guy went big game hunting. He's such a fat piece of lard. So it's like actually the irony, the least athletic badass person in the world kills the most badass, one of the most badass animals. Oh, I don't have it up, did I? I didn't, did I stop sharing it? Oh, look at this. Yeah. Sorry. Look at this real quick. Is this guy right here kills this big lion and then the brother of this scar. So he killed who was Simba's dad? He killed Mufasa, he killed Mufasa and then Scar, and then Scar and comes <laughs> and eats this dude alive. Well, so, that, that, uh, that lion's not going to be needing to eat for a while. No, he's not. <laughs> yeah. the whole pride, the whole pride is full uh, to them. I say ISO. ISO up. You go uh, ahead, Greg. Okay, go, go. I, got, I got two quick ones here. I got a video here so I want to show. Um, I, I love, I love sports. I can watch just about any kind of sport, but for me, my whole life, it's been basketball and football. Like, I just love watching basketball and football. I'm a huge NBA fan, like, big college basketball fan. There's some things I've never seen happen, though. Uh, and last week, uh, during a college basketball game, I didn't actually see this, but I heard about it. So let me uh, share here real quick. Uh, there's an Uber Eats driver who just... <laughs> he deliver food to the coach or something? That would no, be awesome. This, this guy literally just walks onto the court, and I don't know who he's oh, trying yeah. to deliver to. Now, I come to find out later this is gonna, this is a prank, which I'm kind of icing him up for doing this prank because it's kind of messed up anyway while somebody's trying to uh, trying to perform in a game, you know, to do this. But let me... Oh, you know, I didn't share the audio, but it's okay. Uh, y'all see it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, here we go. So check out this Uber Eats driver down here in the bottom corner right over here. He's just walking on the court <laughs> in the middle of the game he's walking on the court to deliver something to somebody. And it turns out that it was a prank. It was a bunch of students who organized this and it wasn't really a delivery, which is dumb. They anyway. gave it to the what they order it for the ref. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. Uh, but I'm icing up them for that because, uh, you know, they're they're th- This means something to some people. And I get it's a funny prank, but this does mean something to some people. And you're messing a lot of stuff up. Um, that's just taking a little too far for me missing with the actual game people's careers could be involved in this and not necessarily this game but what's going on there so i'm icing them up and then tony i wanted to ask you a question aren't you a huge tiger king fan uh mm-hmm. i'm gonna say ti- yeah i mean i thought i enjoyed the show you enjoyed it yeah why, why haven't i heard anything about them finding the, the husband alive yeah because yeah, they it kind of, was, they found a, the it was a side story in the whole show. It wasn't really. No, that was a pretty major part of that show. What, that Carol B- Baskins yeah, was a killer. Carol Baskins killed her husband. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was an entire. Whole... It was an entire song. Yeah, it was Look like that was Baskins <laughs> killed her. Husband. I think it's interesting Whacking. that he faked his death to get away from her. <laughs> that, you know, it's bad. <laughs> you know, it's bad. Yeah. I mean, he's the one that's been missing. He didn't come forward. Dude, he's he got been found. living his best life. I know. 
That you know what, he's like, I got away from them fucking you. weirdos. You know what's even yeah. what's even better is I'm pretty sure there was life insurance on him. So Carol will have to pay that back. I'm sure that Netflix. Fuck Carol Baskins. Yeah, yeah, I know they're they motherfuckers. You don't want to hang out with any of them. They're all like, like if you want to hang out with them, then you go ahead and get rid of your meth pants on. Dude, I like that Doc Hansel <laughs> guy. I don't care what no one says. <laughs> Is like he the it. one that had all the baby, the children? Uh, no, he's the he guy hired that all had the. Like, no, he had three different wives or whatever. And, yeah, and, he uh, like courted these little fifteen year olds. Oh, it's fucking strange. The whole thing was fucked up. No, they weren't fifteen, but whatever. That guy is all right. Um CK. Um, yeah, so I I won't go into like a lot of detail about a story, but I'll just say as a general overview, um, you know, th- there's some things going on with my family, um, not my like direct family, but you know, brothers and and, and whatnot. Um that you know, have to do with family court and the the complete and utter disrespect family courts have against males. Like Ooh. it is unbelievable. Like there is not a single moment. Like there is not a single family court in, on in in this United States that has not infringed on men's rights, like constitutional right. Almost every single one of them that they can. Like it's not even. Like it's not even debated. They're, they won't even deny it. Um, and and so what what I have been happy to see lately is there has been a lot more like content driven around what you actually see from some toxic women who will try to get child support from men who actually have custody of their own children. Like women still go and get like this, just these incredibly vapid and just clearly shallow women that just have no intention of being a good human or a good parent to their child. And their only goal is to get money. Right. And, and unfortunately the courts all too often grant that money unwarranted and without any uh, evidence to show that there's a reason that they need to be provided that money. Right. Especially when men want to have joint custody or a full custody of that child. Right. So the, the fact is, Right now, I'm not going to make an argument about abortion, but the the whole point of, you know, my body, my choice. Well, there have been men who wanted abortion, but the women went through with it. They should have the right not to pay child support. Right. Right. If you believe that. Right. You have the you have the right to say you don't want the child. If I want the child, but my my say has no say. I can't force you to have have a baby because it's your right. Right. But you're telling me because you've forced me to have a child that I have to pay you child support for the next 18 years because of something that I didn't want, right? So even in that case, I think it's a shitty situation and I'm not advocating for that. I think that you everybody should be held responsible for their actions. Um, but I, at the end of the day, the the absolute travesty that is men's rights when it comes to family courts, again, my own, uh, just some inf- stuff going on in my life, not just like women trying to go to child support. I'm talking about uh, child protective services taking children with no evidence whatsoever there's anything going on like just literally a whisper of something and they'll come and take a child away from from a loving family and and a, and a, and a father's it, where where statistics say children who grow up with fathers are far better in society than if they were in a single mother home and that's not to knock single mothers but when you look at the the 79 percent of serial killers come from single mother homes 75% of rapists come from single mother homes, right? This is not an, uh, a, something that you can, you can say is uh, just opinion. There are statistics and facts that back all of this up. And the fact that men are just completely disregarded in our society uh, of, of, you know, family court, uh, parental, uh, you know, uh, uh, just being able to have uh, joint custody of a child is is so rare in today's society it's just absolutely asinine and so i just want to say ice up to uh you know the the women who are trying to take children away from a loving father and the courts that absolutely have no right to do these things and continue to act um for their own well-being financially by the way they're not doing it because they want to do it for the children they're doing it for a financial benefit um and there's plenty of evidence in the in the judicial system to back that up mm-hmm. Ice up. The number for the longest running Panthers podcast is 252 228 5098. You can call in uh, later for next week 
uh, with the Friday free for all rocking big cult following there. One of our biggest years yet to come, whereas we approach 5,000 subscribers, please uh, subscribe to the podcast. Check us out on iTunes, TuneIn, Stitcher. Even if you are still watching on YouTube right now, just subscribing there, giving a little feedback on that on those platforms helps us reach more people uh, as we have reached your ears for three hours and 50 minutes tonight. I do it with my man Cody Lashley, who has pulled like an eight hour streaming day today. Dude, your boy's been on one, you know. Yep. Thank you, brother. Out here, uh out here putting out content for this beautiful fandom that we have, man. This C3 fan base grows all the time. Uh by the way, we're damn close. Thousands of that's fuck. So close to 5,000. Hit that subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Every single time we go live, man, you can find me on Twitter at Cody Lack, C-O-D-Y-L-A-C. Um, find all my written work on drafttech.com. And uh, every Friday, 7 p.m., Friday free for all, baby. Come be a part of this action. I want uh, all of the listeners to know that they are the show. You guys are the show. We are the players together. Frank Wright said it's a player's game. Well, we're the same as you. So I want to hear your ideas for content going forward. What you guys think would be fun to do as fans. And I want you to go check my man CK out. How can they find you? You can find me on all social medias uh, at Codizzle Allen. Um, and obviously we're going to be here um, and we're going to be looking at trying to drop additional types of content. So be on the lookout for that. Um, some top five type content stuff to kind of give you our opinion on things like who are the best uh, Carolina Panthers players in, in the history of the, of the team. Um, you know, maybe top five draft picks that we would like to free see take agents. We got a lot. Yeah, we got a lot coming. So we're going to be working on some content uh, here over the next few weeks. So be looking out for that. And we're going to make sure those are highly produced. So, uh, keep an eye out. Greg, how can they find you? Uh, check me out at the Bat Daddy 52 on Twitter is my personal handle, or I have a show on Fridays at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on YouTube, right after the Friday Free for All called Geeks Chasing Squirrels Across the Multiverse. We're talking about all kinds of books, comics, media, uh, television shows, audio dramas, anything out there that's cool or fun to listen to. Tony, I think you might be coming on this weekend to talk about I, some I, I'm, I'm definitely trying to put it, make it okay. happen, bro. I'm okay, ready. It's no big deal. We got watches. Yeah, I'm trying up. to make it happen. I think it's going to happen. I'm, re- I'm like, I just got to confirm with my wife, but it's in my plans. Okay. Got a lot to say about that stuff. What a great show. It's so fun. I love, uh, look, go check out uh, Geeks, Ch- Geeks Chasing Squirrels Through the Multiverse because it's just like what we all do other than talk about the Carolina Panthers. And there, there's a reason this show goes on for three hours and 50 minutes. It's because Tony won't shut up because y'all are my friends. This is what I want. Like, I mean, now I just got to go home. We're friends. Yeah, you were my friends. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Cody. <laughs> Look, Cody's on mute, and thank God, or else I would have really, we would have been broken up right then, whatever he said. Take us out of here. C3 Panther Nation, until next time, keep pounding.